Estonian Russian border, all the while insisting it is Russia which helped negotiate the ceasefire that ended the killing in eastern Ukraine that is being aggressive. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports Utah Congressman Jason Chaffetz raised eyebrows Wednesday when he said the mayor of Washington, D.C. faces arrest and could even go to prison if a new law in the District of Columbia decriminalizing marijuana in amounts less than two ounces goes into effect. Initiative 71 passed in November with a 70% approval rate would make it legal for District of Columbia residents to possess small amounts of the drug, as four states have already done in the last two years. The problem, however, is that Washington, D.C. is governed by Congress and passage of the new law without consent raises a unique set of legal questions. Congress has previously signaled its opposition to Initiative 71, meaning if the law goes into effect, it will be setting up a clear conflict with its governing body. The chairman of the House Committee of Oversight and Government Reform, Representative Chaffetz, said regardless of how legal D.C. officials believe the initiative to be, it is not. D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser said, We believe that we're acting lawfully. I have a lot of things to do here in the district, me being in jail would not be a good thing. Initiative 71 was scheduled to become law at 12.01 a.m. on Thursday, the minute city officials claim Congress's window to review the matter closes. And if it does go forward, Chaffet said that opens up district officials to criminal charges. As of late Wednesday evening, it appeared as though Mayor Bowser and city officials might be willing to press ahead with the matter, perhaps challenging Congress to do something about it. Ultimately, it would fall on the Department of Justice to take action. Action. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. Fans help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the fans program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month, thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the fans program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F A N S.fppradio.com. Reuters reports Apple has been ordered to pay $532.9 million after a federal jury in Texas found that its iTunes software infringed three patents owned by patent licensing firm SmartFlash LLC. Though SmartFlash had been asking for $852 million in charges, Tuesday night's verdict was still a blow to Apple. The jury, which deliberated for eight hours, determined Apple had not only used SmartFlash's patents without permission, but did so willfully. Apple, which said it would appeal, said the outcome come was another reason reform was needed within the patent system to curb litigation by companies that don't make products themselves. SmartFlash sued Apple in May 2013, alleging its iTunes software infringed its patents relating to accessing and storing downloaded songs, videos, and games. The trial was held in Tyler, Texas, which over the past decade has become a focus for patent litigation. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Buying a burger might start taking a bite out of your wallet. Meat prices skyrocketed this week after the place that makes the meat revealed that the cow smashing machine is all beefed up. This machine has beef way up in it. The basher, the meat collector, even the main meat hole, all of it. Lousy would be. The cow smashing machine is an integral part of the meat making process, taking whole big cows into one end with all different meats falling out the other. Supermarket chains warn that unless we start smashing cows again soon, we could face a serious beef shortage. The beef industry is working hard to unclog the cow smasher, but says it could take several days or even weeks to scoop all the beef that's crammed up in there. Until it's fixed, meat-hungry Americans can take solace in the fact that the chicken grinder is working at full capacity, just completely tearing up all those chickens, and the pig machine is porking out hardcore. Up next, bluesmen find a rising trend of their babies done leaving on that their old devil train. This is the Onion News Network.
This is Free Talk Live. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio tonight, it's me, Ian. And Johnson. And is anybody really surprised with what has happened with the FCC today? The net neutrality discussion has been going on here on this program for, uh, well, I don't know, several months, if not more than a year where people have talked about this idea of the government leveling the playing field on the Internet and forcing all Internet uh, service providers to provide equal treatment to all packets. Clearly the Internet is broken and needs to be fixed. Clearly. Obviously there's so many problems with the Internet. Yeah, I don't get it, man. It had been working fine for me, but now now the government has uh, decided to go ahead and surprise, surprise, Grant more power to itself. <laughs> Johnson, I think you've got the story about the FCC's vote today. I've actually got a couple of stories about this. Apparently, they made a couple of different decisions. But um, okay. the Federal Communications Commission approved strict new rules for Internet providers Thursday in a historic vote that represents the government's most aggressive attempt to make sure the web remains a level playing field. Rules would dramatically expand the agency's oversight of the country's high-speed broadband providers, regulating them like a public utility. They were adopted by a three-to-two margin, with the commission's Republican members voting against them. Under the rules, it will be illegal for companies such as Verizon or Cox Communications to slow down streaming videos, games, and other online content traveling over their networks. They will also be prohibited from establishing fast lanes that speed up access to websites that pay extra that pay an extra fee, and in an unprecedented mo- <coughs> precedented move, the FCC could apply the rules to wireless carriers such as T-Mobile and Sprint in a nod to the rapid rise of smartphones and the mobile internet. Hmm. This is no more a plan to regulate the internet than the First Amendment is a plan to regulate speech, uh, God said the FCC chairman, Tom Wheeler, which... Of course, we know what the FCC does to free speech. Um, Yeah. (laughs) So basically what he's saying is, this is absolutely a plan to regulate the internet exactly how we regulate free speech, which means that we will be regulating the heck out of it, and you're going to be destroying your freedoms. It's just the beginning. Get ready. Bend over. Right. (laughs) Now they've taken more control than they've ever had in this one uh, fell swoop. Right. They both stand for the same concept, openness, expression, and an absence of gatekeepers telling them what they can do, where they can go, and what they can think. Unless, of course, we're the gatekeepers. (laughs) We are the gatekeepers. Nobody else should be the gatekeepers. Don't try to compete with us. We will smash you with our guns and Mm. our troops. Our stoom troopers will raid your radio stations if you attempt to broadcast without our permission. They, you will read, You cannot have a license. It's no true. licenses. It will be millions of dollars right. because there are no gatekeepers except for us. Well, yeah. And what <laughs> happens if you want to open up your own internet service provider without their permission? Right. They'll do the same damn thing to you. You'll yeah. get raided. Yep. Can we have pirate internet service providers? Is that possible <laughs> now that it's deregulated? Maybe well, I mean, there's what? Net- mesh networks, right? <laughs> we're, we're surfing the lines, man. <laughs> <laughs> Soon there'll be movies about that. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you never know where it's going to go from here because once the government, you know, the camel gets its nose under the tent, so to speak, how long will it be before it's total control over content? <laughs> They're claiming That's, it's going to be equal access for all until they decide otherwise. You were just reminded me another. There's a major news story going on right now that's so dumb uh, when you said the camel gets its nose under the tent. Have you heard uh, that about this... Um, there are like some llamas that escaped. Mm, uh, no, I haven't heard <laughs> There's about There's been that. like a police chase. Uh, Where is this? <laughs> In the me, U.S.? Uh, yeah, it's like a major student. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's like a, a, a major chase has been going on today uh, with these Arizona uh, llamas. There's a white llama and a black llama that have been on the run. Um from the police and like i guess this chase was going on for hours they couldn't catch these uh huh. llamas um i just thought it was really yeah cute. thanks for sharing that it's <laughs> cute you, and you know you said so, camel, camel gets its nose under the tent I was yeah just i've got a related llamas. story here johnson i don't know if there's more from from your piece that you want yeah. to share but i've got one from Mises daily that says net neutrality is a scam but go ahead with uh, oh yeah i totally agree 
So the proposed regulations reflect more than a year of deliberation by the FCC. Yeah, and they've thought carefully about this. Yeah, and it says, and a surprising turnaround by Wheeler. I don't know who wrote this article, but apparently you're stupid. Mm. Um, the former cable industry lobbyist who had initially supported a proposal that was much friendlier to internet providers. It's also a significant vig- victory for consumer advocates. Hold on. Well, not wait, wait, wait. Hold on. So wait, did that just say that the industry... Cable industry people had initially opposed it, but that turn, then turned around to support it? I well, okay, that. sorry. I, I probably didn't read that very clearly. So the proposed regulations reflect more than a year of deliberation by the FCC and a surprising turnaround by Wheeler. They say that it's surprising because he's, and it's not surprising, by the way, because now he's the FCC chairman, mm-hmm. but they say it's surprising because he was a former cable industry lobbyist. He oh, used to lobby oh, for oh, the cable oh. industry. Oh, see, I see. And he had initially supported a proposal that was much friendlier to cable internet providers. Um which, of course, now he's in power and he's yeah. been completely corrupted because now he's a shill for the government. Um, it's They say this This is a Washington Post article that's also saying that it's a significant victory for consumer advocates, grassroots organizers and Internet companies and Democrats, all of who spent months pressing for what Obama called the strongest possible rules on net neutrality. And all these same people, these morons, will be and I'm reading for myself now, mm. will be decrying, what happened to our internet? What free speech? Blah! When it's like all falls down around them, you know, in what, five years from now? When the internet is completely a just, there, when the FCC is getting involved in free speech on the internet and regulating things and uh, saying these websites are bad, so we have to, we, we ha- well, we can't have yeah. a slow lane for certain websites unless, of course, that website is the Pirate Bay because, of course, even though we don't have any relationship with the RIAA or the MPAA, well, now we do because we have to regulate yeah. these things and protect our, our industries. I, I don't feel good about saying I told you so, um, but I imagine at some point we'll be saying I told you so oh, on yeah. this to all those so-called libertarians out there who supported this. This was one of the reasons why this issue was so controversial, why we were discussing it so much, was because we got a lot of calls about this. A lot of people were calling in, taking both sides of this issue, and some of the people who supported the FCC's more greater involvement, which they now have, would be people who called themselves libertarians on this belief that somehow the government's going to protect them from mega corporations. And I'm sorry, the history of governments doesn't really back you up on that. The government backs up the mega corporations. In fact, I find myself wondering here, Johnson, if this really is so bad for the cable industries. Maybe on its front, you know, maybe on its face, it doesn't seem like a good thing, but aren't all these regulations going to make it more difficult for people to start internet service providers? Yeah, well, doesn't mm-hmm. that to some extent protect Time Warner and Comcast and, you know, those uh, those major players out there? Maybe, maybe, maybe not, because apparently also there's, this is the other article that I brought up, is that the F- FCC apparently has also overturned state laws that protect ISPs from local competition. So this is the other thing that happened today, apparently, um, is that supposedly uh, the Federal Communications Commission today voted to preempt state laws, in, uh, such as state laws in North Carolina and Tennessee, that prevent municipal broadband providers from expanding outside their territories. The action, again, is a year in the making, supposedly. So that would prevent... Um, oh, well, okay, so maybe <laughs> there's a couple different ways you can look at that, right? So they're saying municipal providers. That means... The city of Keene. Right. If the city of Keene were to start providing internet service. To Marlboro. And, and, and in some areas, municipalities have provided right. internet service. This, yeah, this would allow them to expand out beyond the city limits. Winchester, you know, yeah. towns that border Keene. I mean, it's hard for a liberty, liberty my person to really uh, cheer that one on. I right. Guess. I mean, uh, you know, do we support having a municipality involved at all in providing internet? No, generally I don't. Right. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you know, if the municipality is going to enter into that, then should they be able to go outside of their area? There's probably an argument for that. Right. Yeah. You can share your thoughts with us here toll free at 855-450 for you've got more details for us, Johnson. Sure, a little bit. And then coming up, the uh, Mises Daily over at the Mises Institute has weighed in on this with a piece called The Net Neutrality Scam. Do you think this was uh, this was necessary and you really believe that it's going to stop here, that the FCC is just going to leave it alone? Or is, is Johnson's speculation correct? Will the FCC, after another three, five years or something like that, decide to come up with a list of banned websites? Like I they just, did in Australia. I think it's interesting that just just uh, a week ago, China figured out how to slow down and block traffic on uh, VPNs. Oh, boy. You know? Yeah, that's right. And that they can block them completely. That's true. 855-450-FREE. More coming up here. This is Free Talk Live. 
hair was falling out in clumps. P.D. stopped eating and all his hair fell out. Mounds and mounds of fur all over the plate. Our hairballs have hairballs. Our golden retriever, Sundance, he scratched incessantly. There was hair all over. I heard a radio advertisement for Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids, zinc. There's flaxseed oil, the seaweed, the kelp, the digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Within two weeks. The shedding slowed down to almost none. The scratching went away after a few days, and Sundance's coat was starting to get shiny and glossy the way it had when she was a puppy. Tons of energy, no more bad smell. If your dog has shedding, dry skin, excessive scratching, the phone number for Dynavite is 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24-7 to help you. We also have other pain relieving braces too for your shoulder, ankle, or back. You may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you, so please call now. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. Something else you can get over at freetalklive.com is some coffee for free. You get a pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox by going to coffee.freetalklive.com, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica and shade grown. It's great coffee, and when you order through coffee.freetalklive.com, then you're benefiting people in really tough parts of the world to make a living by giving them micro loans. Uh, Mark is uh, normally our co-host here. He's out tonight because he's actually traveling to Anarchapulco. 
Uh, but he is administering these loans through Kiva.org. So you're buying great coffee. You get your first pound free. You just pay the shipping cost over at coffee.freetalklive.com. And a portion of the profits are going to microloans to help people around the uh, around the globe. Coffee.freetalklive.com. The news is kind of what you probably expected. The FCC has voted in favor of aggregating more power to itself. Uh, that's what happened today, and apparently a three to two vote, Johnson, according to a story that you're sharing with us. What's the source on this? I, for, I forgot where. Uh, Washington Post. Yeah, the Washington Post saying that, uh, that in this vote today, the FCC has decided to regulate the internet or these internet service providers, broadband internet service providers, as public utilities, sort of tantamount right. to uh, you know telephones and power lines and things like that. Yep. Do you have more you want to share? Sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, actually, hold that thought. We've actually got Dalek and Cap on the line here via Skype. Dalek, are you with us? Yes, I am. How's my audio? You sound fine. Go ahead, sir. All right, good. Well, and here's one thing. I mean, the FCC, the people who control the radios, that's controlling the whole radio station at this very moment and regulating it and uh, saying that you can't uh, say really bad words, you can't, uh, you have to actually grab some frequencies, you have to, uh, you have to do all these crazy stuff just to actually fall in to do like a radio station rather than, you know, kind of not get some public, uh, you know, acceptance. It's also wanting to regulate the internet. That's completely and utterly. I don't see why people are not thinking about that. Yeah, you said that. Uh, you said it was completely and utterly what? You kind of cut out there for a sec. Completely and utterly insane. Yeah. Well, it's te- it's tempting, you know, to use the state for your own ends. It is, it is power. It is a gun. It is violence, and uh, and and it disconnects you from that violence. The people who are supporting net neutrality will never be the ones who pick up the guns and go in and point them at some, you know, internet geeks uh, who are running an internet service provider. Uh, that'll be the police's job. So everybody else can just sit back and pretend like this is what, you know, this is what we need. This is regulation. It's keeping people in line. You have to remember that there are a lot of dumb liberals out there that just think that anyone with even a slightly Republican or uh, non-liberal, uh, um, you know, non-big government statist sort of. Uh, bent to them they think they're just kooky the government is here to help us it's a great yeah. thing well they don't want to see the violence you try to show the gun in the room if you will the the violence that right. backs all of these government programs you try to show that to somebody whether they're liberal or conservative right uh, ma- many times they don't want to see it sometimes you can show them the gun in the room and they'll say yeah that's what i support because they totally embrace the idea of using violence to uh, enforce their way on others but as a liberty mind as a liberty minded person or as a libertarian or voluntarist uh, you shouldn't support the gun in the room even yeah. if it's convenient I mean for I you. should I should be clear like if this were a different issue I'd be like these conservatives yeah <laughs> you know I'd be well there's libertarians who support this. sure yeah okay and I think that's what uh, Dalek ancap is surprised about Liberal, right liberal libertarians yeah, and here's one thing here's one thing also I mean within the 300 I mean I think it's like 332 two pages of this whole document that they said yes to who knows who knows what is in there and what they can do well That's according to uh, according to the insane. Mises Institute's article here they say the FCC refused to let people see the 300 plus page proposal before the uh, the vote today Oh so, my God. Really? Yeah, that's correct. Are According you to them. Me? No, that's well, I mean, that's what uh, wow. Ryan McMacken says at the Mises Institute, presuming he's accurate in that statement. Dang. Anything oh, else, Dalek, wow. you want to share tonight? Um, not only that, I mean, uh, with uh, the whole FCC, and then plus, I mean, not even being, you know, looking at the legislation, but will this? I mean, has anybody also taken any account that it might also affect uh, other countries? Oh yeah. How would how would it affect another? Because country? this is probably going to affect uh, you know companies that are based in the United States and and potentially uh, are how the connections to other the line if the the providers are being regulated, mm-hmm. the lines coming from the United States to other countries are being regulated. I see that. 
Okay, good point. Dalek, thanks for the call tonight. Toll-free number here is 855-453-FREE. To today, potentially, is the, the day the internet was exterminated. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Who reference. Uh, okay, so uh, Mises.org, uh, but we'll get to that here in a moment. Johnson, more from your sure. story. Sure. Okay, so it goes on to say, providers in the, here in the United States have, in fact, blocked applications on mobile devices, which not only hampers free expression, but also restricts competition and innovation by allowing companies, not the consumer, to pick winners and losers, this? said Democratic FCC convi- okay. c- Commissioner Mignon Clyburn. Um, Internet providers have signaled that they are likely to challenge the rules in court, while conservative mm. lawmakers have slammed them as a government takeover of the Internet and vowed to overturn them. Those kooky conservatives. Mm. We have never argued argued that there should be no regulation in this area, simply that there should be smart regulation, <laughs> says James W. Ciccone. Or Do it C- our way. Ciccone. So this uh, is the conservative uh, side? He's the AT&T Senior Executive Vice President of External uh, and Legislative Affairs. <laughs> AT&T's <laughs> corporate he's, lobbyist. He's, he's the AT&T Senior Executive Vice President of External and Legislative Affairs. Get it ready. <laughs> That's his full title. Don't get it wrong. <laughs> and he said in a blog post, what, We really think we should be able to write these regulations. Yeah. What doesn't make sense and has never made sense is to take regula- uh, take a regulatory framework developed for Ma Bell in the 1930s and to make her great-grandchildren with technologies and options undreamed of 80 years ago and live under it. I agree with him there. Yeah. But I don't agree with him that uh, we, we need to have regulations in place right. at all. Right. And in fact, uh, you could make the argument that one of the reasons why the U.S. is not one of the best places in the world for internet speeds is right. due to the fact the uh, the government has already been involved, mm-hmm. and that local governments have been restricting, especially ISPs. that local government and the restriction on ISPs and yes. competition is ridiculous. I mean, this is not look going up to make the connection better. speeds in Korea and Japan, people. Uh, Brewing presidential politics could pose another threat to the long-term viability of the rules. Should a Republican win the White House in 2016, analysts and industry lobbyists say a GOP-led FCC could decide to reverse any regulations passed by Wheeler's commission. A Republican FCC commissioner, Ajit Pai, slammed the rules in an attempt to micromanage the Internet. Or as an attempt to micromanage well, the internet. So the, the speculation here is, all right, America, if you want to get rid of net, root, net neutrality, just vote for the Republicans in 2016. Yeah. That'll make everything all better. Which Maybe. they won't do anything. Yeah. They, you know, right. This would be the first thing that they didn't overturn. They'd be like, we got control. Whee! Oh, yeah, sure. They'd focus on creating new programs. Right. Now and, we can regulate with our to, to uh, coincide with our religious beliefs. Right. Go to more wars as well. Right. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450. Free are you, fast are your, connection to the State Department website and all the propaganda for the military. Whoop-a-doo. What are your thoughts? High speed. 855 450 free. Free talk live. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction. Auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc. As in Creative Commons. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You might as well just hope, because that's really all you can do, you might as well just hope that censorship isn't next on the horizon. You remember, right. it was a couple years ago that, it was probably actually more like a few years, if not several years, but Australia, I don't know if you remember this, Australia put on uh, restrictions on the types of pornography that could reach the island. So they would, uh, they required their internet service providers to put people into, if they opted into it, from what I understand, was it an opt-in thing? I don't remember the detail, but they required internet service providers to maintain a list of websites that were prohibited from reaching their customers. And I don't know if it's expanded out since then. If you're in Australia and you want to kind of clue us in as to the current status of that, that was pretty scary stuff. And now here you have the U.S. government coming in with regulations for the internet that had not previously existed. I'm, I'm hoping the ISP's lawsuit is successful at overturning this. I mean, this this battle ain't over yet. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, it's disturbing news and something that I think any libertarian worth their salt who supported this, you're going to be sorry at some point. Let's go to Tommy in Glasgow. You're on Free Talk Live via Skype. Tommy, go ahead, sir. Ah, good morning. Oh, good evening. So it's good morning over here. How are you doing, lads? Yes, okay. good morning there in Glasgow. Go ahead, sir. I'm, I'm just trying to put Tays off the, the hands free here. I pulled in. Sorry. Hold on just a second. I've just. That's all right. We've got nothing but time. <laughs> and the ratings Hello? are going down. Okay, very good. Tommy. Yeah. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I wanted to talk. I don't know if you've heard some of the stuff over here about. A, gentleman or not a gentleman he's dead now but a, a guy called jimmy savile no, is it the equivalent of something like johnny jimmy savile yeah it's equivalent of the united states having someone like jimmy uh, johnny carson 
uh, been implicated with a, a paedophile ring. Oh, wow. All the way from, from Westminster and the royal family and the Pope... Uh, John Paul II as well. Uh, this man, Jimmy Savile, I take it you've How not heard of him. How do you spell his last name, Jimmy what? Jimmy Savile, S-A-V-I-L-E. <laughs> now, if you put Jimmy Savile... Yeah, I never would have guessed Jimmy, <laughs> Sav- Jimmy Savile and you put a uh, wizard. There's a wonderful documentary, about 45 minutes. And he was born on the 31st of October, Old Hallows Wee Eves. And he was born on a... a uh, a satanic ley line uh, in a place called <laughs> a Leeds. Satanic what? Right? A satanic ley line. It's a right. line and, and of he, magical he, power. What? What is a ley line? It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an imagine. Well, it's an imaginary uh, support of, so, sort of a uh, current of magical Britain, energy that runs across the planet. Yeah, Britain. Britain has got many ancient ley lines that go back, obviously, you know, hundreds of thousands, well, thousands of years, because ancient civilization. So these a- ancient ley lines. Are believed. Well, I can, I can give you a quote. Here, from, wait, can uh, I, can I uh, tell Ian something real quick here? Yeah, so, please. so this is yeah, the yeah. definition of uh, ley lines, supposedly from uh, ancientwisdom.co.uk. Ley lines are hypothetical alignments of a number of places of geographical interest, such as ancient monuments and megaliths. Their existence was suggested in 1921 by the amateur archaeologist Alfred Watkins, whose book *The Old Straight Track* brought the alignments to the attention of the wider public. Um, it's been written about in a lot of different things. And, and if you wanted to have a, a thing, Ian, I mean, you've played uh, Ingress. Uh huh. Those would, uh, that ley line concept is pretty much kind of yeah. like what you've got going on in Ingress. Those lines between monuments and. Invisible lines yeah. of satanic power running through the earth. <laughs> sure. Gotcha. So I've got the story here, uh, Tommy. It says, uh, just to kind of bring our listeners up to speed a little bit, uh, from yeah, theguardian.com. Politicians, civil servants, and National Health Service managers gave Jimmy Savile free reign to sexually abuse 60 people, including children as young as eight. Ah, uh, but, but hold on, decades. listen, listen, this is, this is, see what they've put out in the media. Now, what I'm going to give you just now is, uh, I, I was listening to someone else, a guy called Thomas Sheridan, and his theory on it, and now there was a guy called the Yorkshire Ripper, who went about killing women. Now, he's got 13 murders to date, and then there was these two men and women called the Moors Murderers, uh, Brady and Hindley. Now, the alleged tie-in is that Jimmy Savile was part of their cult. Now, he what, what has been alleged that Stoke Mandeville, to the public... He was a nice, happy, jovial face, and he came about with different phrases, jingle, jangle, and abracadabra. He had a, a tea time show <laughs> on Saturday evening, right, on BBC. That's the British Brainwashing yep. Corporation. That's the state TV. And he had a show called Jim Will Fix It, where people would write into him. And myself, I Jim didn't into him to see it. Gotcha. Jim Will Fix It, yeah. And then what happened, he, built, he helped build this through... Uh, charity donations, he was a great man for doing charity, so the public thought, oh, he's a great guy, but in the background, there was these rumours going on, he was a sexual... So do you believe you believe the claims, then? You believe the claims that Jimmy Savile, well, who... Was... Even, well, no, it's not, even, it's not even a case of do we believe it. The, the stuff that has been given out just now, so far, that he, he's a sexual deviant, but I'm taking this further because there's other evidence out there They may even be a killer. He may even be wow. one of the biggest serial killers, and he's got connections what I would say, to, what I would say to you is, there's a picture out there he's got with Peter Sutcliffe, who was a Yorkshire ripper. And people he are, had keys. And, and what you're saying is that people are keys, protecting him. Yeah, he was giving keys to Broadmoor, which is houses Britain's most uh, biggest killers. And Jimmy Savile was giving keys to. He was giving keys to Stoke Mandeville, and then there was a girl's home. There's a whole investigation, so he was looking for people with broken spines, uh, which Stoke Mandeville looked after, which was the uh, uh, sto- uh, broken Who's spines. Stoke broken... Mandeville. I'm sorry, I don't know that name. That, is... that was a host. That was a hospital. But a hospital, the, 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 okay. one of the keys is. So what Jimmy you're saying? Savile this was... guy had access to like mental hospitals where he was then. Mental hospitals, children, children's hospitals, and then he fed these. And do you believe that uh, he was murdering people? Is there any evidence for that, or is that just speculation? Well, well, I'll send you some links. No, no, no. There's huge evidence out there, but the new evidence is, I mean, the stuff that they've is told you. Is this guy you still alive? Just, Savile? Is he no, still he died dead? a couple he, years ago. He, he died three years ago. He died three years ago, but no one up till he died would mention anything anywhere. And now yeah. people believe he was. A, a, Oh. Uh, bringing children 
uh, for people like royalty and prime and, and, and ministers of government and civil mm. servants, the, the, the sex scandal, and then by using them, disposing their bodies, and then using people like the Yorkshire Ripper. Well, there's long and, and the, been uh, speculation about things like this. Tommy, thanks for the call tonight. Uh, we'll me. read a little bit more about it here. But there's long been speculation that there are these sort of underground uh, child sex rings that benefit the uh, the politically connected. So that's what Tommy was suggesting there. I, just, I was such a horrible person. Just that accent and hearing the story about a pedophile. You know, just <laughs> just. Well, apparently he wasn't <laughs> it just, just made into the children. Story funny to me, and it's just horrible. It's uh, like apparently he wasn't just into children here, Johnson. The story yeah. says that he uh, his victims range from eight, eight to, to forty seven. Uh, Saville's celebrity status, his connections with the then Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and with royalty, and his role as a fundraiser allowed him unfettered access to patients, staff, and visitors at the Buckinghamshire Hospital. Over 20 years, he brazenly used that power and access to rape, sexually abuse, harass, intimidate, and silence his victims who I'm, ranged in age from 8 to 40. This according to two damning reports. I'm just imagining the type, you know, the Scottish folks try to brush out of the rug, like, oh, he's not a racist. They just start giving him a bit of a tug on their wobbly bits. You know, just like, <laughs> like, what What do they say? How do you how do you brush that under the rug and ignore it? Like, okay. Well, I don't think it's being ignored now. I mean, well, it's yeah, coming now out that he's dead. Public here. You know, like, but no, I mean, if, if well, okay, the, the reason why you would protect this this person would be maybe because some of these allegations are true. Like maybe there are uh, these underground sex rings or whatever that are using I guess. sick like people eyes and wide children. Shut kind of thing. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. A report into Seville's activities at Stoke Mandeville by Dr. Andrula Johnson and Christine Dent. Have said you seen the pictures of this guy, by the way? He is creepy. Creepy, like, creepy, creepy looking. Creepy looking. He, uh, he looks like the guy from Poltergeist or whatever. Said the BBC's celebrity uh, reputation. Oh, you mean the, the priest? I don't know. I've never seen the movie. I've only seen the... The power of Christ compels you. I've only seen the boxes for Poltergeist (laughs) as a kid. Just the white-haired guy, right? Yeah, that's. I think that. I think it's the guy you're talking about. Is the priest? Just creepy looking. I don't know who he is in Poltergeist. Day fifty-five, four fifty free. That's the toll-free number. Oh no, that's totally wrong movie. That's not Poltergeist that has the uh, the exorcism. The okay. exorcist. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen it. 855 450 free. We'll talk more about this. Uh, Jimmy Savile. Plus, we'll go back to net neutrality here. It's Free Talk Live. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose to nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24 hour relief from sneezing an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort Allergy 24 hour. Stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. 
Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special super early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through early March, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com. All the features there we give away, so enjoy those on us. Again, that's freetalklive.com. Coming up, the Texas Bitcoin Conference. It is basically right around the corner. We're about four weeks away at this point. It's going to be at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin, March 28th and 29th. Keynote speakers will include George Gilder, who is a world-famous investor, economist, and author, plus IBM's architect of their blockchain technology. Zimbala Nair is going to be flying in from India. You'll be able to see J uh, David Johnston, Jason King, Robert Murphy, Fee, Vitalik Baterin, Charlie Shrem, and more over at the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference. You can go and get registered at TexasBitcoinConference.com when you use code FTL. You'll knock $25 off the already affordable $150 admission price. And when you use code FTL, another $25 of your admission will go towards Sean's Outpost, a great Bitcoin-based charity in North Florida helping out homeless folks. So, Plus, don't miss the second million-dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. That's going to be hack uh, happening hacking as well <laughs> hacking. at the uh, second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference. We'll look forward to seeing you there. Free Talk Live broadcast live last year. And uh, we'll be broadcasting live there this year. So go to TexasBitcoinConference.com. It's March 28th and 29th in downtown Austin at the Moody Theater. We look forward to seeing you there in person. TexasBitcoinConference.com. Don't forget code FTL. We we're talking about uh, Jimmy Savile. This is a story that Tommy turned us on to a moment ago. Coming up, we'll talk more about net neutrality and the vote today from the FCC. And I should abso absolutely apologize for my absolute <laughs> I can't even apologizing do, for your for accent my absolutely horrible scottish accent horrible 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 scottish accent it's absolutely terrible it's not bad it's really not bad it's it's it's, bad. it's pretty <laughs> i just can't i can't pretty, even do it for extended pretty, you, pretty can't, you can't pronounce for an extended the extended period of time i can't really you can't keep it up I kind of keep it out. Uh, speaking of uh, <laughs> Scottish accents, I heard DuckTales is coming back in 2017. Oh, the, yes. The old uh, Disney cartoon. Yep. Uh, so report, this is about Jimmy Savile. He is apparently a celebrity over in the UK, or was. He passed away a few years ago. But there's now a report, uh, a couple of reports, that The Guardian is uh, citing here, saying this guy was involved in uh, what could be as many as 60 sexual abuse cases, including children as young as eight and people in their 40s. A report into Savile's activities at the Stoke Mandeville by Dr. Andrula Johnston in, uh, said the BBC celebrity reputation was an open secret as him being a sexual predator. <sighs> Yet he was able to go about his business not only unchallenged but also with the perception of sanction from the senior hierarchy. This report stopped short. It's like an open secret. Ah, this guy just rapes kids. You know, eh, whatever. 
The report stopped short, however, of holding senior managers accountable, saying there was no evidence they were aware of Saville's behavior, despite junior staff saying it was widely known. On 10 occasions, vulnerable what? patients complained about his sexual abuse to staff, their parents, and to teachers, but they were either not believed or ignored. The report said, oh, Jimmy Savile would never do something like that. Well, I wonder if there's an issue of, uh, you know, consent going on here. Well, I mean, that's possible. Right? What if there was maybe people weren't speaking it's up about It's certainly it possible, there Johnson, wasn't really that abuse this going creepy on. guy went into a hospital room and got consent from 60 different patients to have sex with them or whatever the hell it was that he did to them while they're laying in a hospital bed. Oh, yeah, well, I suppose okay. <laughs> that could be all of those cases, and 10 of them were, you know, resulted in complaints being issued to the staff okay, members of okay. the hospital. Then, no, probably yeah. not. Okay. Seems unlikely. <laughs> that seems, it seems unlikely. unlikely. Uh, super, uh, yeah, I'm Jimmy Savile. I'm really interested in bedridden patients and having sex with them. Can I have sex with you? <laughs> I'm Jimmy Savile, damn it. Anyway. Oh, well uh, then, okay. Yeah. Uh, on 10 occasions, again, these complaints were ignored or not believed. A supervisor tried to raise concerns to higher management but was reprimanded. Patients who complained to nurses were told to stay silent, and one victim who told his head teacher was laughed at. Kate Lampert, who carried out an independent review of Savile's activities across the National Health Service, said in her report, also published Thursday's, quote, Savile's status and influence was enhanced by the endorsement and encouragement he received from politicians, senior civil servants, and NHS managers. His access within NHS hospitals gave Savile the opportunity to commit sexual abuses on a grand scale for nearly 50 years. Wow. Jeremy Hunt, the health secretary, said in a statement to the Commons that the power of celebrity or money must never again blind people to repeated clear signs that vulnerable individuals were being abused. He said people were, quote, too dazzled or too intimidated by the nation's favorite celebrity to confront the evil predator that we now know he was. So as Tommy and Glasgow pointed out, this guy was tantamount to sort of a Johnny Carson over in uh, the, the United Kingdom. Right. However, Liz Dux, a lawyer at Slater and Gordon who represents 44 of Savile's victims, said the report had been met with crushing disappointment because it held no one accountable. Dux said, quote, it beggars belief that a report which has revealed Savile was widely known as a sex pest at Stoke Mandeville can find, what? Can find no evidence of management responsibility. Ten victims had reported their assaults to nursing staff on the ward, including one complaint being made to management, yet his deviant and sickening behavior continued. She said the revelation of the report, or in the report, that three other doctors had committed serious sexual offenses at the hospital in the past, uh, in the past four decades suggested something seriously amiss. Savile abused victims as soon as he started frequently frequenting Stoke Mandeville in 1968, said the report. He became a porter at the hotel, having... Hotel. Hospital. A porter at the hospital. Uh, having been invited in by a fellow porter who had worked with Savile at Leeds General Infirmary, where DJ had abused, also abused patients. He was a nightmare. He was vile, a staff nurse told the inquiry. Others described how when he turned up in a ward, a, quote, Jimmy Savile alert would go out oh, and wow. we'd all disappear, unquote. That's really creepy. They would disappear. Yeah. Meaning they would leave so he could just get away with his molestation? I guess. I don't know. That's what it sounds like. Savile's victims at Stoke Mandeville included an eight-year-old boy and girl, also eight, who was raped at least ten times by Savile when she visited relatives there. One victim was systematically abused in the chapel by Savile, who was often accompanied by another unnamed man. Quote, every time I went in that room, I just knew he would touch me wherever he wanted to touch me, Ugh. she said. A 12-year-old girl was raped by Savile in the television room. She returned to her ward and told a nurse that the porter, Savile, had, quote, hurt me down there, unquote. She was told not to say anything. Otherwise, the nurse would get into trouble. Later that night, Savile appeared at the girl's bedside and sexually assaulted her again. Alone in the room afterwards, the child tore a page from the Bible in the room and wrote a note Two notes, rather, asking for her father. She posted them into a red post box in a corridor outside the ward, hoping someone would contact him, but no one did. In 1980, a clinical super... This is just horrifying. It really uh, is. In, all these people went along with this. In 1980, a clinical supervisor tried to escalate the concerns of students 
who had told her of sexually inappropriate behavior by Saville at their accommodation block, but the supervisor was, quote, reprimanded for interfering. By the way, you know, a little while ago I had said that, you know, look if you look at pictures of Saville, if you can look at pictures of him, I thought he looked really creepy, and I, I started comparing him. You said he, you, you had asked me if he looked like the guy from Poltergeist, yeah. and I had confused that, and I was thinking of the, the guy from Exorcist. That actor's name is William O'Malley. Okay. And uh, if you look at them, actually, they do look very similar. It's just weird because William O'Malley is obviously a priest in real life as well as he was in The Exorcist. And this, I didn't know that. This guy Jimmy Savile is um, like a satanic version of that. Hmm. <laughs> like, but he looks very similar. Between 1972 and 1985, nine informal verbal complaints and one formal report were made about Savile by his victims. Johnstone found that none of the complaints were either taken seriously or escalated to senior management. So, I mean, Johnson, it's sad here but what's happening is it sounds like there's a like a, a protection scheme in right. place for this jimmy savile at the highest levels of these hospitals uh and that the lower level staff knows exactly what's going on they're the ones receiving the complaints but because he's being protected by the higher ups the lower level staff is too afraid to actually speak up because they don't want to lose their jobs right how do you go up against how does you know a low level nurse go up against the hospital administrators right it's a scary situation. It's weird too. Like, why are they protecting this guy? Just, like, what is it? What benefit are they getting from this? That's a good question, and that's I think where the speculation comes in about you know satanic cults and uh, right. whatever Tommy was suggesting earlier. The formal complaint in 1977 came from the father of an 11 year old girl who was sexually abused by Saville in a treatment room. The girl screamed hysterically, and a senior nurse arrived but told her to be quiet, saying Saville would not do such a dreadful thing, and he raised a great deal of money for the hospital. Ah. So maybe that explains it. They're certainly, protecting their donor. Yeah, certainly goes a long way towards explaining it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. More on the story here about Jimmy Savile. Some pretty creepy stuff. You can share your thoughts. 855-450-FREE and bring up whatever's on your mind. This is Free Talk Live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, February 26, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,208, up $3. 
Silver opened at $16.61, up six cents, and Bitcoin is trading around $237.29. Today's metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Looking to promote your business or cause to tens of thousands of loyal listeners? For a limited time only, the Liberty Vita is offering you the chance to say big while spreading your message. It's simple. Just sign up for three months of advertising and get your fourth month free. Just visit thelibertyvita.com slash advertise and use coupon code GCN in the Describe Your Company section. In the news, Tuesday evening, President Obama vetoed a bill which would have approved final construction of the Keystone XL pipeline. The White House released a statement explaining President Obama's position on the matter. The president believed the bill was in conflict with established executive branch procedures. Obama said there were security, safety, and environmental issues related to the bill that prevented him from signing it. On Thursday, the FCC will vote on the so-called net neutrality rules that have not been seen by the public. The FCC is expected to pass new rules on net neutrality with a vote of 3 to 2. Net neutrality is aimed at providing a balanced equal treatment to all Internet content. Critics say the new rules and suggestions to treat the Internet like a public utility will lead to overregulation of the Internet. In honor of the launch of the new and improved SovereignLiving.com, each day this week the Liberty Beat is bringing you a simple survival tip that just might save your life. With today's tip, Here's John Bush. Make a bug out bag. A bug out bag is a bag or backpack which contains the bare essentials that you would need should you have to bug out for whatever reason. Some people call this a 72 hour bag as it should contain enough supplies to keep you alive for 72 hours. Included in the bag should be first aid supplies, non perishable foods and eating utensils, tools to start a fire kept in a waterproof bag, ammo for your firearm, a flashlight with spare batteries, spare clothing, cash, and anything else you may need to stay alive and somewhat comfortable for three days. Keep the bag in a quickly accessible place in your home or keep it in your automobile. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, February 26, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. According to new documents from whistleblower Edward Snowden, Canada's spy agency has been secretly monitoring massive amounts of emails as part of a domestic cybersecurity operation. CBC News and The Intercept released the documents, which detail a data mining operation by Canada's communication security establishment. Through the program, millions of emails are analyzed and archived for months or years. As of 12.01 this morning, cannabis is legal for adults 21 and older in Washington, D.C. Initiative 71 was passed in November and allows for adults to possess two ounces or less, as well as legal use on private property. Washington's mayor, Muriel Bowser, was warned by congressional Republicans that she would be breaking the law if she allowed the measure to become law. A new study from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has found that abundant use of antibiotics has made Americans more susceptible to a strain of bacteria, responsible for at least 29,000 deaths in one year. The study focused on the Clostridium difficile bacterium, which can cause deadly diarrhea. An overuse of antibiotics wipes out good bacteria that typically protect a healthy person from infection. Published in the New England Journal of Medicine, the researchers found that hospitalizations from the bacteria doubled between 2000 and 2010. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Support also comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the conscious resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, February 26, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagen reporting, reminding you to spread liberty with a smile. If you live in Williamsburg, chances are good you've seen them. Giant piles of beard hair rotting in the streets. Don't worry, it just means hipster molting season is here again. 
Experts say the husks of dead beards don't pose a threat to public safety and are just part of the natural life cycle of these strange organisms. Once a year, all at the same time, every 20-something urban male sheds his ironic beard to make room for larger, more fanciful facial hair. They need the beards. They're a tough exoskeleton that protects these young people from the non-whimsical realities of life. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service says it's the largest molting season on record. In Brooklyn, sanitation crews are working overtime to clean up the loose whiskers the exuviating males have left behind. The affected youth's molting season comes right before their mating season, when the males use their lush beards to impress the local hordes of burlesque females. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. freetalklive.com. Joining you in studio tonight, Ian here. And Johnson. Disturbing story brought up by one of our listeners about Jimmy Savile. He's a television entertainer who is now passed away, but there's some shocking info that has come out about him. The, he was a big star, I guess, over in the U.K. Uh, the claims, according to two damning reports cited by The Guardian, is that he sexually abused at least 60 people, including children as young as eight and people as old as uh, their 40s, uh, raping, sexually abusing, harassing, intimidating, and silencing his victims. And he was backed up, allegedly, by the hospital staff of uh, Stoke Mandeville Hospital, and according to the story here, uh, we can tell you a little bit more about this. It's very disturbing. They they cite different time frames and different uh, complaints coming from people that were ignored, that were actively suppressed. Uh, the people at the hospital, the, the higher-ups, would essentially threaten the lower-level employees with firings if they continued to bring them these allegations about Jimmy Savile that were coming independently. You know, these right. victims over a period of 50 years did not know one another. It was not like they were connected in some sort of plot to right. uh, oust Jimmy Jimmy Savile as a, a, a false pervert. Uh, so a little bit more coming up on this story here. Uh, but first, let's talk to Sherry. She's in Missouri. Sherry, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Johnson. Hi, you all. Hi, Sherry. You know, you all talk like you have never heard of Jimmy Savile before. Uh, I, mean, I haven't. This I have not. You. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch a no, lot of okay. British comedy. I mean, I've certainly seen a number of British television shows. Well, it's not comedy first yeah. of all it's news okay. and it's about children of the world and don't think that these same sex rings aren't operating here oh and, no we you know we were talking about how we absolutely think that they are well yeah i find this believable I'm, personally I, that's why I'm, I know it's believable but what i'm saying is i can't believe you haven't heard the story already yeah. and it Sorry. brings back <laughs> to the fcc there's a lot of news out there and by the way, this well, is breaking news. True. This story just came out today. Well, Jimmy Savile has been in the media for a long time, but has have the allegations you know, about him being a, a child molester pervert been in the media for a long time? Well, here I've been looking at an article that I looked up well, is from January 13th, 2013. Media. Let's put it that way. It's not been in the mainstream media, that's for sure. They're okay. not going to tell you about it. Well, it is now cuz the Guardian well, is reporting on it. The internet Right, but that's where the internet is important, <laughs> and bringing it back to the FCC rules today. Mm -hmm. My goodness, um, people do not even understand how our government runs. It's they true. have made a, a rule, an order. Well, an order takes thirty days, okay, and that's the thirty days that our Congress has to say no. I don't think so. And that's where the people's house is supposed to work. Was there but, any suggestion, Johnson, in the story you were reading before about the net neutrality regulations passing today? Was there any suggestion that Congress could somehow overturn this? Because I thought there was a plan to overturn it in the courts. That was what the ISPs were planning on doing. Uh, I don't recall hearing they, anything about Congress. They only suggested that's, in 2016. That's a never-ending battle. That's a never-ending battle. The Congress, actually, they have the purse strings and they have the ability to say no. They have the ability to challenge that order. 
they won't. In Congress. Well, they're not going to shut down the FCC over this. I mean, I, I hope you're right. Well, I they mean, they don't I, have to shut down the FCC. All they have to do is challenge that order. Okay. Just like any executive order, there's 30 days. Just like a judgment from a court, there's 30 days in which to appeal. Hmm. And well, the Congress has the right to appeal it. Yes, we are so ignorant about how our legal system works about how our law and our government works. Well, you we're know, certainly taking your word for it, Sherry, because the, you know, the news story <laughs> well, hasn't no, look covered it that. Up. Look it up on the Internet why it's still free. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Sherry. I appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So Sherry saying that should Congress want to take some sort of action to block these net neutrality rules, that uh, she believes that they could. Of course, that would require the president to sign off on that action, wouldn't it? Like so, right now, right. Uh, the net, neutral net neutrality vote was three to two today uh, by the FCC. It was down party lines. Two Republicans voted against it. So the suggestion I think Sherry is making is that the Republican Congress can save the day and turn over these net neutrality rules. But in order for that to happen, they would have to have Barack Obama sign the bill, right? Yeah. I, I How likely is that to happen? Yeah. I mean, I, to be honest, I don't really pay attention for, to how a lot of the federal government stuff works because I don't have any direct influence over that, and I don't care. Well, presuming you know? Sherry, presuming what Sherry says is true, that the Congress could make a sure. move, anything Congress does has to be approved by the president unless there's some sort of veto-proof majority, right? Here's what I know. Every time I've voted for anyone in Congress, that vote has resulted in that person not being elected, I mean, ever in my entire life. So, you know... <laughs> Yeah, it's kind I'm, of like an impossibility to have any influence over the federal government whatsoever for someone like me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not going to get my uh, my hopes up here and, uh, and expect Congress is going to ride to the rescue for the Internet. But, you know, if it happens, we'll certainly let you know. You know, I kind of like to think, and so I don't vote Republican or Democrat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So back to the story about Jimmy Savile, and uh, if you're shocked we'd never heard of him, well, we don't live in the UK, and I don't know all of the, the British TV stars. I mean, I've only probably heard of a, a select few over the you know different British television shows that I've seen over time. I mean, I could tell you who Rowan Atkinson is. Uh, he's, he was <laughs> in Blackadder and Mr. Bean yeah, as well. Um, so anyway, going on here. There, so lots of complaints against this Jimmy Savile character. Say, uh, pretty serious complaints, many of them being completely ignored. Uh, one nurse r arriving to the screams from an 11-year-old girl who was sexually abused by Savile in a treatment room at a hospital. The nurse uh, was not able to escalate the situation. She was told to be quiet saying Savile would not do such a dre dreadful thing, and he raised a great deal of money for the hospital. The incident was, quote, serious and should have led to Savile's suspension from the hospital and a formal police report being made. There can be no excuses made in relation to what was acceptable at the time or how children were perceived. This was a serious allegation and should have been investigated fully as it was reported to a hospital manager. The report revealed how Savile's charitable work and status within the hospital were boosted by Thatcher, who in 1980 sponsored him as the lead fundraiser and commissioning project manager from a ten, or for a £10 million campaign to rebuild the spinal injuries unit, a move which gave him, quote, virtually uncontested authority and control. Savile flattered Thatcher during several meetings, including trips to Shekers, the prime minister's country residence. In one letter to Thatcher, he wrote, quote, Dear PM, I waited a week before writing to thank you for my lunch invitation because I had such a superb time. My girl patients pretended to be madly jealous and wanted to know what you wore. All the paralyzed lads called me Sir James. They all love you. Love you. Me too. Unquote. He was also supported in his new position by Dr. Gerard Vaughn, a health minister at the time who rode roughshod over concerns and policies to give Saville free reign, said the report. Quote, no member of parliament or the Department of Health and Social Services, to our knowledge, knew about Saville's sexual, uh, sexual abuse activities, unquote. Okay. But there were major consequences of their actions. I figured something out here, Ian. Yes, so, sir. uh... On August 9, 1997, Saville underwent a three-hour quadru quadruple heart bypass oper operation in Leeds um, at the Killingbeck Hospital, um, having known he needed the surgery and whatnot. And so his health was, like, in massive decline and at that point, like, in 1997. So basically from, like, 1997 to 2011, I don't think he's done much. So mm -hmm. everything he did was done before that time. Now, in 1997, that's when I was just getting out of high school. Right. You know, so maybe uh, this woman who was the last caller is not aware that, hey, 
we're a radio show of some guys who are, you know, in their 30s. Yeah, we're fairly young. It's true. <laughs> we're, we're fairly young. So the reason why we're not aware of somebody like Jimmy Savile is because he hasn't really done much in damn near 20 years. <laughs> so, you know, like he was a big shot apparently in music and stuff like that in the 70s and maybe somewhat the 80s. Uh, but, yeah, past really the 90s, he wasn't a thing. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. You can take control of the airwaves. We can talk more about the net neutrality thing. Also, Johnson's got a, a shocking story about magic mushrooms helping people quit smoking. Shocking numbers as well. Mm, yeah. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show here at username lrn.fm. There is more Free Talk Live coming up. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Okay, guys, when it comes to shaving, you've got to check out harrys.com. Why pay 32 bucks for an eight-pack of blades? Harry's high-quality German-engineered blades are half the price of drugstore brands. Harry's starter set with a razor, three blades, and shave cream is just $15 with free shipping. With promo code 5858, you get $5 off your first order. After using code 5858 at checkout, you can get an entire month's worth of shaving for just 10 bucks. That's harrys.com, code 5858 gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. NASA announced the discovery of a mile-wide asteroid this week that could potentially trigger a global level of extinction, forcing upscale fashion retailer Nordstrom out of business. Researchers confirm that the celestial object is traveling at speeds exceeding 29,000 miles per hour, threatening to slam into the planet with more than a million megatons of force, enough to jeopardize operations at all 117 full-line Nordstrom locations. Unless we can find some way to divert or intercept the asteroid, all 7 billion people on Earth, including all 62,500 Nordstrom employees may die. Even if the asteroid breaks into smaller pieces upon entering to the atmosphere, a death toll as low as several hundred million could still slow foot traffic in stores and reduce online orders from Nordstrom subsidiary Hotlook. Humanity is surprised it still hasn't figured out an alternative to letting power-hungry assholes decide everything. And a magical office worker is able to turn everything he touches into more work for his colleagues. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road underground market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. 
Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live, you dial toll free to bring up whatever you'd like, 855-450-FREE. That's the number, 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. With you in studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Johnson. And don't forget, you can also uh, join us in, uh, via Skype. We've got the Skype username here, lrn.fm. You just send a contact request. It will be approved. And then uh, once it is approved, you can easily contact us about you know, whatever you darn well want to talk about. We've been talking about a, kind of a sick situation over in the United Kingdom with a BBC host or a television host of some sort, Jimmy Savile, apparently fairly well-known. I hadn't heard about him, neither had you, Johnson. But uh, he was an uh, older guy, and he passed away a few years ago. He's alleged to have victimized something like 60-plus people over a 50-year time span uh, very disturbing stuff where he was given access to where he was given uh, given access to a uh, hospital at least one where he uh, was able to molest people and do all kinds of uh, disturbing things that essentially the management turned a blind eye to the lower level staff said they knew what was going on but if they said anything about it they were worried they were going to lose their jobs and so there was just sort of this conspiracy of silence. It was interesting to this. me, you know, reading the Wikipedia page for this guy, too. And that's how I kind of figured out that, they, hey, he used to be a big shot. He used to work with The Who. Oh, and, wow. And some, you know, he worked with a lot of uh, music groups. And he did some, you know, obviously with his television appearances and his shows and whatnot. That obviously, it was, it, you know, he was obviously a big shot at the time. And, uh, but... It's funny because a lot of the names and whatnot, reading through some of his history and whatnot, it's just like name after name after name is being dropped in the Wikipedia article of people who I also don't know who, who they are. And so it's it's kind of interesting. Um, just it's I'm not one of these people who knows a lot about that particular area of music. I mean, this is probably people who are Beatles fans and, and that fan of that type of rock. Um probably know all about this because this, this is like you know he's mm -hmm. he's part of that era of time and um obviously work with you know the beatles the who uh work with you know some of those uh, huge huge name mu music acts um but yeah it's not not anything recently so you would have to be into that uh sort of you know According to one of the authors pop. here of the report, there was an ongoing dependence on Savile's charitable funds, which ensured his continued position of power and influence at the hospital, which was often detrimental to service management. She said, quote, second, Savile was able to ac access a new cohort of victims for his sexual abuse in the guise of young charity fundraisers to the hospital. David Clay, who was made general manager of the NSIC in 1983, said Saville acted as if he was God. Quote, it was Saville's, it was Jimmy Saville's kingdom, he said. By the time Ken, Cun Ken Cunningham was appointed in 1991 as unit general manager at the hospital, he said he was shocked by the power wielded by Saville, who then, or by then, had a bedroom slash office installed with a Berber carpet, a flipped down bed, a large leather sofa, and a gold letter box. Quote, this was a man who had the ear of royalty, prime ministers. It worried me that there was someone who could buy the loyalty and friendship of senior staff, he said. And so this was a new guy who came in, right? So this uh, new GM comes in in 1991, right? And and is just you know taken aback a by the level of control that this essentially fundraiser has at the hospital, right? Going on in 1993, when Stoke Mandeville became a NHS trust, NHS is the National Health Service, the government-run uh, health system there, Saville's rule began to be challenged, and the inquiry said his sexual abuse stopped around 1992. But the patients he attacked were left to deal with abuse, which was not believed and continues to scar their adult lives. Quote, one victim says, quote, I didn't know what had happened. I didn't understand what had happened. I knew it felt wrong, and I felt dirty. And I wanted to clean myself, and I just wanted to wash myself again and again. I did not understand. I could not even explain to myself what had happened. Just a horrifying, yeah. horrifying story here. The toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. And you have to wonder how 
often things like this. You have to wonder how often things like this are happening uh, in the world. Right. Is is Jimmy Saville, if this story is true, and these are you know well researched reports with dozens of victims, if what is going on here with Jimmy Saville in this hospital is true, I gotta how think, many other places is something like this happening? I wonder how bad it is because it seems like uh, maybe that's something that would be more common in a in a bygone era. You know that Why? kind of that kind of celebrity worship. Um, I just think that people now, uh, especially in the United States, want to see celebrities burn. <laughs> like there is just I a, don't know, man. I mean, People Magazine still selling. I mean, there's still people watching so entertainment. Are all the tabloids. The moment any TV. celebrity does anything kind of racy or weird, they're like they hop on it like wolves. Yeah, but but all that said. Um, so I see where you're coming from there, Johnson. But uh, at the same time, there's still a lot of celebrity worship here in in the United States, and there are some celebrities that can do no wrong. We're talking about somebody who integrated himself in an institution, and that institution protected him, right? Because he was bringing them money. I mean, if if Brad okay. Pitt did the same Fair thing, enough. if Brad Pitt comes to a, a you know children's hospital with five million dollars or something like that right. and you know yep. that makes him the top donor yeah um would he be able to be given the same level of uh, of treatment no, i mean it's nice I to think... be- it's nice to believe that uh you know that that today people would be better at communicating these things the but i don't know i think within a specific organization that you're going to have that kind of a problem within the organization but i think the moment that any there's any kind of leak in a modern you know in the modern times um, it's going to be everywhere. You know, there's going to be like internet stuff. There's going to be, you know, blogs and photography and video. I mean, anyone with a cell phone now can uh, expose that type of uh, dirty behavior. Um, whereas back then, it was a lot easier to keep that kind of thing a secret. I'd I say think. there's an argument to be made for that, but, uh, you know, the. 12 year old in the hospital bed may may or may not have their phone with them. I mean, I don't know. It's certainly more likely that something like that would happen, but then if they're uh, if they're intimidated by the celebrity, then they're not going to do those things. And again, right. they, they were complaining, but they weren't being believed. And so what good does a complaint do if the response from the adults is, "Oh, Brad Pitt would never do something like that." What are you talking about? He's here helping the kids and he's giving money to the hospital. Why would he want to, you know, go molest people? Right. So, I think there to some extent is there's a mix between people who just won't believe it and then to and then also the people who do believe it, but they're too afraid to say anything about it because they don't want consequences to befall them. In the same way that there's lots of police out there who know that there's corruption within the police departments, but they don't want to do anything about it because they don't want to lose their possibility for a pension. Unfortunately, the possibility of lost paychecks is a very strong motivator to people doing the wrong thing and not uh, not passing on the word about this stuff. And I think that that those and I think those motivations are still present today. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I, you know, I don't know how, how do you you know how how does that, this type of thing get pre- prevented? That would be what my question would be: is how do you you know like if it's not? I don't know. Yeah. Toll free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. Maybe you can answer Johnson's question, 855-450-3733. Plus, coming up, the Mises Institute on why net neutrality is a scam. It was passed by the FCC today, so-called net neutrality. We can talk more about that. Toll free number is 855-450-FREE. You can join us here. You can also join us via Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. More free talk live coming up. Attention listeners, SurvivalLife.com is giving away free EverStrike permanent matches for a limited time only. These matches are waterproof and will light in any weather condition, rain, snow, or sleet. It will still throw a spark. Its built-in ferro rod strikes at 3,000 degrees, and it is good for 15,000 strikes. Normally, $15. Today, it's free. Get yours at FreeWaterproofMatch.com. Again, that's FreeWaterproofMatch.com. Hurry, supplies are limited. Visit FreeWaterproofMatch.com today. Do good people ever want to call an attorney just to find out if they're right or wrong? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what are you forced to think about first? Money. If you could call as often as you wanted and talk as long as you need without a bill, would you call? Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. 
What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. Hey! That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at Forum.LRN.FM. That's Forum.LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free to bring up anything that you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live brought to you by chwine.com. That's Cameron Hughes Wine. Johnson, you were at the wine tasting that we had a couple of weeks ago here in Keene at the Keene Activist Center, correct? Right. Yes, it was delicious. Uh, yeah, I thought it was uh, it was excellent, and so we brought six different wines from Cameron Hughes. Now, the thing with Cameron Hughes is he doesn't actually have his own winery. He doesn't uh, he doesn't have his own vineyard. What he does is he goes to the best vineyards out there, and he talks to those vineyards and gets and purchases from them their excess wine. So you know they make a batch of wine, and there's some that they just can't sell. So what Cameron Hughes does is he takes that extra wine, puts his own private label on that wine. And obviously with the full agreement of these uh, these vineyards, because he can't sell the vineyard's wine with their name on it at a discounted price. But he can sell that same wine as Cameron Hughes wine at a much lower price than the vineyard would offer it. So it's coming from some fancy vineyard. You just don't know which one it's coming from, and you're paying a fraction of the price. These are wine bottles that would normally cost you $70 to $100 that you'll pay on average $15 a bottle through Cameron Hughes. These are award-winning wines in many cases. So go to chwine.com, click the microphone in the upper left-hand corner, and use code FTL, like Free Talk Live. Code FTL gets you free shipping 
on whatever you order from Cameron Hughes Wines. So go ahead and give it a shot. chwine.com. Use code FTL. It's great wine at a fraction of of the price. chwine.com code FTL. Our toll free number here is 855 450 free. We talked earlier in the show tonight about net neutrality and uh, the set, the, apparently the FCC vote three to two today that essentially uh, gives the government more control than it's ever had over the internet. Very disturbing news. The Mises Institute has interesting perspective on this. Now, I think this was actually written slightly before the vote happened but it's uh, the, the article is called the net neutrality scam it was released today over at mises.org yet again writes ryan mcmackin the government wants to fix a problem that doesn't exist according to the obama administration and the fcc it is necessary to regulate internet service providers so they don't interfere with people's access to the web they uh, the claim immediately prompts one to ask who is being denied access to the web. Right. In the past 20 years, access to the internet has only become more widespread and service today is far faster for many people, including ordinary people, than it was 20 years ago or even 10 years ago. Today, broadband in Europe, where the internet is more tightly regulated, has less reach than right. it has in the United States. Or let's look at, say, for example, you know, another industry, healthcare. Oh, wait, that really, really, really heavily regulated industry? Everyone's got access to health care, right? No, it's not at an affordable price, that's right. for sure. <laughs> the administration's get plan... Get ready for internet bills to be like, oh, you need to pay $1,000 a month to get on the internet. That would, that would be like the, uh, the health care analog to, uh, or analogy to... Uh, to the internet. Yeah, I hope you're wrong about that. Yeah, I hope well, it doesn't I go that hope bad. So too. I don't think it uh, will. The, the administration's plan is rather innocuously called net neutrality, but rather it in fact has nothing at all to do with neutrality, and it's just a scheme to vastly increase the federal government's control over the internet. So what is net neutrality? Well, we don't know the details of the plan because the FCC refuses to let taxpayers see the 300-page proposal before the FCC votes on it today. But we do know a few things. Currently, Internet service providers are regulated by the FCC. But as a information service under the less restrictive rules of so-called Title I, well, now the FCC wants to regulate ISPs as utilities under the far more restrictive Title II restrictions. For a clue as to how cutting edge this idea is, remember the switch to Title II regulation would put ISPs into the same regulatory regime as Ma Bell under the Communications Act of 1934. So what does this mean for the FCC in practice? According to one of their commissioners, Ajit Pai, Quote, it gives the FCC the power to micromanage virtually every aspect of how the Internet works. That's pretty serious. Now, that's from one of the FCC commissioners. And if, right. you know, if, if he doesn't know what he's talking about, then certainly the people you know, on the outside who haven't read this bill uh, know even less. But he says that this will give the FCC the power to micromanage virtually every aspect of how the Internet works. More specifically, Gordon Kravitz at the Wall Street Journal writes, quote, With net neutrality, bureaucrats can review the fairness of Google's search results, Facebook's news feeds, and news sites' links to one another and to advertisers. BlackBerry is already lobbying the FCC to force Net Apple and Netflix to offer apps for BlackBerry's unpopular phones. Bureaucrats will oversee peering, content delivery networks, and other parts of the interconnected network that enables everything from Netflix and YouTube to security drones and online surgery. Unquote. The administration insists these measures are necessary because even though there's no evidence that has actually uh, that this has actually happened, it's possible that at some point in the future, internet service providers could restrict some content and apps on the internet. Thus, we are told control of content should be handed over to the federal government to ensure that internet service providers are neutral when it comes to deciding what is on the internet and what is not. The problem is there's no such thing as a neutral allocation of resources, whether done by the government or the marketplace. In the marketplace, goods and services tend to be allocated according to those who demand the goods the most. Where demand is highest, prices are highest, so goods and services tend to go where they're most demanded. This makes perfect sense, of course, and also reflects the inherent democracy of the markets. Where larger numbers of people put more resources is where more goods and services will head. 
And, you know, if you don't like what the internet service providers are doing, you should be free to start your own internet service provider. Right. But therein lies the rub. Or actually choose between competition. Or actually choose between competition because, I mean, obviously there's no competition available in uh, these markets because the local municipalities grant monopolies to these internet service providers. Or near monopolies. The only reason why we have two choices for internet here in Keene, New Hampshire is because both the cable company and the phone company, who previously had separate monopolies on cable and phone service, both of those people, both of those groups were given monopoly status over, you know, those areas, and then ultimately they developed a way to transmit Internet over top of their existing lines. So it was due to innovation that we even have uh, the two choices that we have. Right. Now, of course, I'm not including the wireless uh, guys. Those guys count, too. Uh, There are other options, I suppose, 4G, 3G, etc., so I agree with the you know the Mises Institute here. These uh, you know the, the the marketplace should be free to decide these things, but the market has been unfree for a long time in internet service providing, and that's where the libertarians I think are falling into the trap because right. they say that oh well the market's been regulated by the government, and so we don't have the choices that we would normally have if we truly had a free market in technology and free market in internet access, and so therefore we need the government to so called level the playing field field. And the problem there is you're asking the government to fix the problems that it started right. in the first place through not deregulation, but more regulation. Right. And any libertarian that is worth their salt should should see that. It should be crystal clear that this is not going to make things better. This isn't going to improve the matters. It's like, you know, it's like escalating the war on drugs as a solution to the war on drugs. Like, (laughs) oh, well, we haven't spent enough. We don't have enough regulations. We still have drugs because we don't have enough regulations and we need more enforcers. I mean, this is tantamount to that. It's it's, it's certainly silly nonsense. I don't I don't see how. You know, I was. I think I was one of the early people who said, like, hey, this net neutrality thing is just another grab for power for the government. I mean, and, you know, a lot of the uh, the backlash to that is saying, oh, no, it's just the, you know, these, uh, the, you know, telephone companies and the, the, the ISPs, uh, you know, with their, their fake grassroots campaign. And, and sure, maybe they're, they're uh, trying to protect their interests, but, you know, and, and I guess the, the, the real problem is that there aren't really any good guys on either side of the issue unfortunately uh um, well, right the federal government or the mega corporations right right toll free numbers 855 450 free that's 855 450 3733 you can share your thoughts whether on net neutrality or also on the way magic mushrooms magic mushrooms helping people <laughs> quit smoking cigarettes apparently a shocking percentage of people quitting 855 450 free more coming up on free talk live share your thoughts So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and 
auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BitBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme. M E M E. Helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme. Your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 if you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's uh, the toll-free number. And you can also join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. So feel free to reach out in whichever way works best for you. Joining you in studio, you've got me, Ian. And Johnson. And don't forget, ExpressCoin is the best choice for your cryptocurrencies. To acquire them, you want to get some Bitcoins, maybe Litecoin, Dogecoin? Just go to ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, they can help you out. All you have to do is send them a money order, check, or wire transfer, and they'll send you Bitcoin or those other coins. ExpressCoin.com. Use code FTL, and you'll get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no fee whatsoever. So it's a great way to get started in Bitcoin as well. If you've never purchased Bitcoin before, or if you're old hat at it, you'll love ExpressCoin because they make it easy and the fees are very reasonable as well. Over at ExpressCoin.com, don't forget to use coupon code FTL. And you can also download their app from ExpressCoin.com for your favorite smartphone. That again is ExpressCoin.com with coupon code FTL. We're sharing with you the Mises.org rundown here on net neutrality, which passed today, unfortunately. The federal government now taking more control than ever before. In fact, according to one of the FCC commissioners who I presume voted against it, uh, Ajit Pai, one of the two people who I think voted against this, quote, he says it gives the FCC the power to micromanage virtually every aspect of how the Internet works, unquote. That sounds pretty scary to me. And it's only a matter of time before the government seizes more power and more power and more power over the things that it uh, that it controls. Right. Yeah. If you thought that you could just bring the government into the Internet and have no further consequences from this, you will probably be sorry here in another few years. And it won't be long. Before they in interfere even further? Oh, I don't think I think it'll be a matter of like maybe five years. Well, yeah, I imagine a major the, problem. I imagine the people who supported this net neutrality thing have been working on exactly that. You know, they're writing up other bills or writing up other regulations as we speak. 
So Mises is talking about how the market should be allowed to work in the area of internet service provider, pointing out that when demand is highest, prices are highest, so goods and services tend to go where they're most demanded. And it makes sense because it reflects the inherent democracy of the markets. Whether larger numbers of people put more resources or where they put more resources is where more goods and services will head. It's this mechanism that drives the marketplaces for food, clothing, and a host of other products. Consequently, both food and clothing have become so plentiful that obesity is a major health problem, and secondhand clothing stores selling barely worn discarded clothing are a boom industry, even in affluent neighborhoods. Similarly, cell phones have only become more affordable and more widespread in recent decades. Because there's relatively low regulation on on computer technology, you mm. know, as far as like new technologies being developed, as far as you know, new uh, motherboards and processors and cell phones and chips and things like that, the government really doesn't get particularly involved in those areas. So there's robust competition. It's the internet access where the government has been meddling for so long, right? And now even worse than ever. For industries where new firms and may not just internet access. I mean, when when you say access, I think it needs to be clear that it's like you know running cables and the infrastructure. Sure. It's you know where where other countries has it's been much easier to establish infrastructure. Infrastructure, uh, the United States has made it a disaster. Governments, local governments especially, stand in the way of a lot of that infrastructure being laid. I mean, not just being laid physically, but also in the airwaves as well. There was right. a controversy here in Keene a couple of years ago. We're in Keene, New Hampshire, the southwest corner of, of New Hampshire. And it's kind of a rural area. I mean, Keene is the seventh largest city in New Hampshire, but you got to put city in quotes. I mean, it's a city for New Hampshire's size, <laughs> but, you know, anywhere else, this would be a relatively medium sized town. And, you know, we're talking 26,000, 25, 23,000 people, somewhere in there, depending on if you factor in the college students. And essentially what the proposal was from Verizon Wireless was they wanted to put a tower up on uh, one of the hills here in town. So this hill that they, they want to oh put the tower. Oh, my God, no! That's what it was. <laughs> but this this very same hill, Johnson, already has a tower on it. It has the tower for Time Warner's head end. Too many towers. You can't handle it. Ah! Yeah, they uh, they could. I mean, they literally. By the way, I'm on one of the few providers that doesn't have 4G in the area. Yeah, well, they probably because <laughs> they couldn't get on a on a tower right. due to the government. And so what ended up happening was uh, the tower was prevented. They did not allow Verizon to build this tower, which, of course, just so you know, these towers are rented out to other companies. So if Verizon puts a tower up, it's not like it's only Verizon who's going to use that tower. You can put all kinds of antennas and you know transmitters and receivers up there. So Verizon's tower would be likely leased out, the majority of it, probably you know 90% of it would be leased out to other organizations to help serve the community with other, you know, technologies and repeaters and things like that. And nope, nope, that's just not an option because somebody didn't want their view of the, the mountain to be untouched, even though there's already a big tower up there right. with Time Warner's head end at it. Now, the head end, of course, is where you've got satellite dishes receiving channels and then, you know, pushing it out to the cable system. That's what that tower is for, and it's already there. But nope, nope, there's these Luddites who don't want any kind of uh, development whatsoever to go on. So what did Verizon have to do? Well, they had to rent space on the existing tower. So thankfully, 4G did come to Keene, but it was in spite of the government, not because right. they were helping it. So, going on here, for industries where new firms may freely enter, this is Mises.org, and customers are not compelled to buy, companies or individuals that wish to make money must use their resources in ways that are freely demanded by others. Unless they've been granted monopoly power by government, no firm can simply ignore its customers. If they do, competing firms will enter the marketplace with other goods and services. And that's basically what I had been saying about this whole scare story, the scare tactic of these net neutrality advocates saying that if the government doesn't get in, these companies are going to restrict the internet and it's going to go slow. The websites that don't pay them extra money right. will so be so slow. And I'm sorry, I just don't believe that that's going to be the case. Internet service providers advertise their speeds. You know, when you, right. when you get a pitch uh, advertisement from Time Warner Cable or Comcast or uh, you know, uh, let's see, who is it around here? The Verizon or 
Fairpoint, whatever, the DSL provider, they're saying, hey, we can give you seven megabits a second for 30 bucks a month. And then the cable company saying, well, yeah, we can give you 30 megabits a second for 50 bucks a month. Right. And the prices come down over time, even in this limited marketplace, even where there are relatively few competitors. They're still competing for price and they're still competing for the quality of service. And there's no reason to believe that that's going to change because one of them gets greedy and decides to start accepting money from Netflix to prioritize their packets. It just doesn't make sense because if they were to all of a sudden slow down every other video service on the internet, if, if let's say, Verizon takes money from Netflix and then they decide to throttle or slow down YouTube, well, then somebody's going to say, uh, hey, somebody over at Time Warner or Comcast, the competitor here in the area, is going to say, hey, did you guys hear that uh, our competition is, you know, they're throttling YouTube? Let's advertise that people can watch YouTube on our system and then we'll get some people to switch over to the cable modems. I mean, that's, it seems like a, it seems so simple to me. Right. So going on here, according to Mises.org, although goods allocated in this fashion are according to well, the administration. you know, you could bring up the point here, what, what about collusion? They could, right? They could cartelize. They very well could do that. That's a possibility. You know, and then they all are going to block uh, YouTube because it stands to reason that then they, you know, it costs them less money. It brings down the prices so that, you know, they're, they're uh, you know, people are robbing people, you know, for the... The internet services. They're, they're going to provide them with bad service and charge them an arm and a leg. All and the that, evidence is against it, though, Johnson. I mean, if you look at <laughs> – uh, I've received advertisements from Time Warner Cable, my cable provider. We've got, by the way, here at the LRN Studios, we have actually both DSL and cable modem. So I actually buy internet services from both of the providers in the right. area. Um, but – I've received pitches from Time Warner Cable saying, switch your phone service to Time Warner Cable. So they've got their own uh, system that they want to install in your home or your office that will give you a kind of a, you know, a desk style phone or a wall mountable phone. And they are competing. I I actually had it for a time. For a cable modem based phone service? Mm -hmm. I don't need it because I don't have regular phone service except for the line that I have that runs the DSL, which I almost never use for anything else because it's only a local line. But they're competing with the rates from the local phone company. They're advertising their rates saying, hey, switch to Time Warner. Cancel your phone service. there's, there's, There's not really much evidence that these companies are interested in colluding to me. Right. Now, in theory, it could happen. It could happen, but then... There's always the pressure to break the cartel. If you if you get a cartel of companies that are, you know, like, for instance, the classic example is the gas stations on the corner. You've got three gas stations on the corner, and all the gas, and they're the only gas stations in town for, uh, you know, what, 50 miles around or something right. like that. And so the three gas station owners come together and they say, all right, if we all set our prices at uh, 15 cents above the national average, then we'll make buku bucks because here we are, we're the only ones that are on this corner. And even if they were to agree to it to a short time, there's that temptation for one of those owners to break the cartel, lower his price five Mm -hmm. cents, and take all the business from the competition. So there's a heavy, uh, when there is relatively open competition, there is a very, very, it's very unlikely that you're going to see cartelization like that. Toll free number tonight, 855-453. But it makes for a good scary story that you can tell people and get them to back, get libertarians to back net neutrality as a result. Come on. 855-453-free. Magic Mushrooms coming up here on Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Cabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. 
Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, February 26, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.75 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,216 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $238. Antiwar.com reports Secretary of State John Kerry angrily condemned Russia yesterday, insisting they are violating the terms of the Minsk ceasefire and threatening to impose more U.S. sanctions on the nation. That's not generally news. It's virtually a daily occurrence that some top U.S. official does so. What is news is that the Minsk ceasefire is holding up incredibly well and that the day came and went without even a single death. The big violation of the Minsk deal is coming from the U.S.-backed Poroshenko government, which is refusing to follow through on a promise to withdraw heavy weapons from the front lines, despite the rebels beginning such pullbacks this weekend. The Obama administration's cynical interpretation of the situation in Ukraine is unsurprising, as they were openly opposed to the Minsk talks in the first place. The U.S. is now making a big deal of parading military vehicles along the Estonian-Russian border, all the while insisting it is Russia which helped negotiate the ceasefire that ended the killing in eastern Ukraine that is being aggressive. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports Utah Congressman Jason Chaffetz raised eyebrows Wednesday when he said the mayor of Washington, D.C. faces arrest and could even go to prison if a new law in the District of Columbia decriminalizing marijuana in amounts less than two ounces goes into effect. Initiative 71 passed in November with a 70% approval rate would make it legal for District of Columbia residents to possess small amounts of the drug, as four states have already done in the last two years. The problem, however, is that Washington, D.C. is governed by Congress and passage of the new law without consent raises a unique set of legal questions. Congress has previously signaled its opposition to Initiative 71, meaning if the law goes into effect, it will be setting up a clear conflict with its governing body. The chairman of the House Committee of Oversight and Government Reform, Representative Chaffetz, said regardless of how legal D.C. officials believe the initiative to be, it is not. D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser said, We believe that we're acting lawfully. I have a lot of things to do here in the district, me being in jail would not be a good thing. Initiative 71 was scheduled to become law at 12.01 a.m. on Thursday, the minute city officials claim Congress's window to review the matter closes. And if it does go forward, Chaffet said that opens up district officials to criminal charges. As of late Wednesday evening, it appeared as though Mayor Bowser and city officials might be willing to press ahead with the matter, perhaps challenging Congress to do something about it. Ultimately, it would fall on the Department of Justice to take action. Action. You can support FPP Radio by joining the Fans Program. Fans help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the Fans Program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the Fans Program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot F-P-P-Radio.com. 
Reuters reports Apple has been ordered to pay $532.9 million after a federal jury in Texas found that its iTunes software infringed three patents owned by patent licensing firm SmartFlash LLC. Though SmartFlash had been asking for $852 million in charges, Tuesday night's verdict was still a blow to Apple. The jury, which deliberated for eight hours, determined Apple had not only used SmartFlash's patents without permission, but did so willfully. Apple, which said it would appeal, said the outcome was another reason reform was needed within the patent system to curb litigation by companies that don't make products themselves. SmartFlash sued Apple in May 2013, alleging its iTunes software infringed its patents relating to accessing and storing downloaded songs, videos, and games. The trial was held in Tyler, Texas, which over the past decade has become a focus for patent litigation. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Shoppers at a Hannaford supermarket could only speculate that the middle-aged woman angrily demanding a price check on a pack of rice pudding was once a carefree youth. I don't care what it says on your screen. You know, this is why people go to the store across the street, because of the way they're treated here. You know, nobody likes it here. Those watching the woman angrily asking for a manager over a $1.20 price difference imagined that the woman was once a fresh-faced college graduate, too spirited and fun-loving to throw a bitter tantrum in front of a room of complete strangers. She was probably once just some freewheeling college kid, you know? Her biggest concern was which one of her friends she was going to hang out with at night and whether they were going to meet at the movies or a bonfire on the beach. Now look at her. You know, I'll bet if you'd have told her 10 or 15 years ago that one day she'd be ripping into a grocery store clerk with a room full of strangers staring at her, she'd have been horrified. It's sad. In other news, a few years in the military would have really straightened out a troubled teen killed in Afghanistan, and a man on the verge of self-realization instead turns to God. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com, where you can get interactive in a variety of different ways. One of them is by submitting content right there to the front page of the website. So do go and enjoy. It's a Reddit-based system, and it is totally free to use. So again, freetalklive.com. Joining you in studio, it's me, Ian, here. And me, Johnson. And Johnson, something you wanted to share with our listeners here tonight is about magic mushrooms. That's coming up. I do want to get into that here in a moment. Uh, 80%, apparently, is the cure right. rate. The cure rate for using magic mushrooms to treat smoking. We'll get into that here in a bit. Mises.org is explaining their perspective on the net neutrality, what they call a scam. And I happen to agree. Uh, people are, have been flummoxed by this particular issue, believing that somehow the government, the federal government, can come in and, and uh, somehow make the Internet better by regulating it. And, of course, the history of regulation has been that uh, regulations just create fewer options in the marketplace for people because they tend to protect the established industries from competition. Now, I know the established industries are crying and uh, bemoaning this particular net neutrality, but overall, the more regulations there are, the more difficult it becomes to start a new business. So ultimately, this this may have the effect of of protecting these existing Internet service providers more so than they're already protected by government. That's one of the concerns I have with yep. this, beyond the concern, which I think is also legitimate, that could that this could result in uh, you know, censorship. This could result in the government coming up with a list of sites that internet service providers are not allowed to allow people to access. Now they're considered public utilities under the new net neutrality rules. And so what is to stop the FCC from rolling in and saying, okay, yeah, you've got to ban the Pirate Bay and you've got yep. to ban kick-ass torrents and you've got to ban, you know, whatever other un the, the websites the federal government doesn't like. Or you'll lose your license. To operate the business, Sure. Uh, so more from Mises.org, they're talking about how unless uh, – they're just kind of talking about the market in general and how it should work or how it should be allowed to work rather than the government meddling. They say that unless they've been granted a monopoly power by government, no firm can simply ignore its customers. If they do, competing firms will enter the marketplace with other goods and services. Although goods allocated in this fashion are not being allocated neutrally, the fact is – 
that more people are more people now have service at higher speeds than was the case in the past. And furthermore, even if firms or the government attempted to allocate goods in a neutral manner, it would be impossible to do so because neither society nor the physical world are neutral. In his recent interview on net neutrality, Peter Klein used the analogy of a grocery store. In modern-day grocery stores, suppliers of food and drink will negotiate with the stores, usually so-called slotting allowances, to have their goods advertised near the front of the store or have goods placed on store shelves at eye level. That's worth money. So if you're Kellogg's right. and you know you want more customers of the cereal aisle to see Frosted Flakes, you would give the store a spiff, some sort of bonus or some kind of cash, what they're calling here the slotting allowance, and the store will then put Kellogg's products there at eye level. Right. Or, How do you think Best Buy is staying in business? What you think they're getting the, these subsidies? Oh, are, absolutely. Are, hmm. You know, like for for you know Apple and Microsoft and Samsung. Uh, yeah, absolutely. They're getting money from those companies to put them on display. And if you're not one of those brands, it's like your bottom shelf. If government were to tell grocery stores to start being more neutral about where they place goods, we can see immediately that such a thing is impossible. After all, someone's goods have to be at eye level or near the front of the store. So who is to decide? A handful of government bureaucrats or thousands of customers who with their purchases control the success and failure of firms. Seems to me the latter would be the obvious choice. The customers should be allowed to decide, not some unaccountable bureaucrats in the FCC. Obviously. In a similar way, bandwidth varies for various ISP clients, depending on the infrastructure available and the resources available to each client. And yet, in spite of the administration's fear-mongering that Internet service providers will lock out clients of humble means and the need to hand all bandwidth over to plutocrats, Internet access continues to expand. And who can be surprised? Have grocery stores stopped carrying low-priced nutrition? foods such as bananas and oatmeal just because Nabisco Corporation pays mm -hmm. for better product placement for its costly processed foods? Obviously not, because customers want a variety of services. Well, who will control the FCC? Asks Mises Institute. All goods need to be or need not to be allocated in response to the human choice-driven price mechanism of the marketplace. Goods and services can also be allocated by political means. That is, that states employing coercive means can seize goods and services and allocate them according to certain political goals and of the goals of the people in positions of political power. There's nothing neutral about this method of allocating resources. And if you want a good example of how that works, go look at uh, the Soviet Union and the bread lines there. Right. And look at uh, today's Venezuela and the lines there. The government in Venezuela has taken over grocers in that really? country. I wasn't aware of that. I don't know if they've taken all of them over, but there are uh, there's at least one or two grocers there in Venezuela, from my understanding, that are now state-operated grocers. That's so weird. And due to the government's meddling in the economy, you can't find basic products in Venezuela. You can't find chicken. You can't find detergent. Well, you don't need those basic products. Apparently you not. You only need what the leader says. Well, if you stand in line long enough at these <laughs> stores, if you stand in line for long enough over an entire weekend, you might be able to get some low-level products shopping taken care of. But you have to go to different stores to find different things. <laughs> Whereas, you know, we're used to going to different stores and finding different prices on the same items. In Venezuela, you have to spend days shopping around to try to find the stuff that you want. So, going on Variety here. is the spice of life. Come on. You get to go to all these different stores, Ian. It's an adventure. It's in, uh, <laughs> in the net neutrality debate. It's almost risable that some are suggesting the FCC will somehow necessarily work in the public interest. First of all, we can already see how the F FCC regards the public with its refusal to make its own proposals public. <laughs> if you weren't listening, if you're just now tuning in, we're talking about net neutrality. It passed today, the FCC voting 3-2 to two in favor of moving more government in control of the Internet, setting it as what's called a Title II, uh, which is you know just more regulations, more control. And ultimately, they did not even allow anyone to read the 300-page proposal prior to it being voted upon. So no one, prior to the actual vote today, had any idea what was actually in this particular piece of... It's not even legislation. It's just regulations. They probably didn't read it even after it was voted upon. <laughs> That's probably, it's probably true. Second, who will define who the public is? And finally, after identifying who the public is, how will the governing bodies of the FCC determine what the public wants? 
It's a safe bet there will be no plebiscitary process, so what mechanism will be used? In practice, bureaucratic agencies respond to lobbying and political pressure, just like any other political institution. Those who can afford to a lobby and provide information to the FCC, however, will not be ordinary people who have the constraints of household budgets and lives to live in places other than Washington, D.C. office buildings. No, the general public will be essentially powerless because regulatory regi regimes diminish the market power of their customers. Most of the interaction that FCC policymakers will have with the public will be through lobbyists working for Internet service providers. So what net neutrality does is turns the attention of the ISPs away from the consumers themselves and toward the regulatory agency. That's, that's true. Now these right. Internet service providers are going to have to spend even more money hiring lobbyists to go and you know lobby for their interests in front of the FCC, which aren't always going to be the interests of their customers, especially if these companies are used to being the only provider in any given area or one of two providers. In the marketplace, the firm's customers are the most important decision makers, but the more regulated an industry becomes, the more important the regulating agency becomes to the firm's owners and managers. I mean, do you disagree with any of this out there? You, the listener, I don't know about you, Johnson, you probably agree with most of this uh, yeah. stuff. Uh, but you, the listener, I mean, if you do, do you disagree with Mises, uh, you know, their interpretation here? I would love to hear from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. The natural outcome, says Mises, will be more regulatory capture, in which the institutions with the most at stake in their decisions end up controlling the agencies themselves. We see this all the time in the revolving door between legislators, regulators, and lobbyists. And you can also be sure that once this happens, the industry will close itself off to new innovative firms seeking to enter the marketplace, which is what I was saying earlier. Right. That Are we going to get any competition to local markets out of this? Probably not. How could you? Right. The FCC didn't just, you know, force the city of Keene to allow anybody to hang lines on the poles here. 855-450-FREE, that's the toll-free number. You can share your thoughts here on net neutrality or whatever's on your mind. There's more coming up on Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world, so I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. 
It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll free here. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com where you can enjoy various features. We give them away to you. Now, something that Mark has set up over on our website uh, is a little demographic survey. Go to demo.freetalklive.com. Oh, hey, there's our music again. <laughs> Just came out of nowhere. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> Thanks, Board Up. Appreciate that. Demo.freetalklive.com. Uh, we're giving away three $50 gift certificates to Corporate Sellout Clothing. They've got some cool t-shirts and stuff over there at Corporate Sellout, and you can get a free $50 gift certificate just by filling out this demographic survey. Now, you've got to do it sooner rather than later. The drawing will be held on March 1st at noon Eastern. So uh, in order to participate, you go to demo.freetalklive.com, fill out the survey, and make sure you leave your email address. You can fill the survey out without leaving your email address, but if you don't leave your email address, you won't be entered into the contest. So that's up to you. Uh, so again, go to demo.freetalklive.com. Whether you listen to us on the internet or on the radio or on satellite, please, uh, we want to know more about you so we can better tailor this show to you know pe what people want, you know, better tailor the advertisers and things like that. Uh, demo.freetalklive.com. Again, a $50 gift certificate to corporate sellout clothing could be yours at demo.freetalklive.com. Will is in Tallahassee, Florida, listening to WVFT-FM. Hello, Will. Hey, Ian, it's Will Dance from the morning show on Freedom 93 FM. Doing a little show prep. I knew you guys would uh, be talking about this stuff, and sometimes yes. uh, you guys have a, a much different and better analysis on, on these things. And here's my big concern, brother, with this net neutrality thing. Number one, they said that this was to uh, neutralize. They always use these big fancy words or level the playing field for the little guy. But yet yesterday, Google and two other companies had the ear of the FCC chairman to make changes to this um, this uh, this regulation, but yet no one's been allowed to read it, or was Google in on writing the thing uh, to begin with? That's question number one. Yeah. And question number two, how does this affect guys like you and me, guys who espouse to free speech and liberty and rights? I use a T1 line to run my stuff to Panama City. You guys use internet and skype i mean how far will this door uh you know get kicked open well i don't know if kicking it open is really the right uh analogy it's more like they're going to slam it shut because this is right. going to keep other companies out of the internet business. I mean, already it's hard enough to start your own internet service provider. Sure. The more regulations they plop on top, the more difficult it's going to be to comply with all of that. And the big companies, while they are protesting net neutrality from some aspects, ultimately they must know that, right? Like the cigarette companies, right. uh, they will write legislation to restrict access to cigarettes, and ultimately it benefits them. 
uh, because they are the ones who can afford to comply with the, the legislation. They can hire a few more attorneys sure. and jump through whatever hoops the government puts up. But if you wanted to start your own company, then good luck. Yeah, it's, it's like any industry that starts an association and then they write their own regulations of minimum requirements for companies, whether it be right. insurance liability regulations. So it just squeezes out. So there's just a group of them to say, hey, I, I'll, I'll, I'll concede that you're in the game. You concede that I'm in the game. But we're going to make sure that everybody else stays out of the game. Sure. And they call that the good old boys is, network. <laughs> right. My other question is, how is this going to affect what I mean, this opens up a whole new gamut of, of levy of abil- ability for taxes, doesn't it? Yeah, well, that was yeah. one of the predictions uh, in advance of this thing happening was that somebody looked at this and they said, well, if this Title II thing goes through, that that's going to mean that there are going to be more taxes charged on everyone's Internet accounts. Well, guys, keep up the good work. We love having you on here at Freedom 93 FM, and uh, thanks so much for for all you do for liberty and freedom. Thanks, Will. I appreciate your call tonight. That's uh, Will, the uh, morning host there over at WVFT in Tallahassee. Yeah, I mean, it's oh, it's really defending the little guy when you're when you're making everybody pay a bunch more money in taxes. Okay. (laughs) Well, right. Right. Who's going to benefit from that? The FCC. They're going to take that money, and it's not like that's going to go to homeless children or something like that. It's going into the FCC's budget to pay more attorneys to do what? Write more regulations to, uh, you know, even more so ensconce the Internet under the control of the FCC. Right. I mean, there, is there somebody out there saying, oh, you guys, you're just paranoid. <laughs> you libertarians, you always think the government's got it out for you, and they're always protecting the corporations. Well, isn't it possible, Johnson, that this time they've done something right and that you libertarians are wrong right. and that over the next decade there will be more freedom on the Internet than there's ever been? Yeah, right. Why don't you believe them? Uh, Why are you so skeptical? Gee, maybe because I've paid attention for the past uh, forever. But, I mean, isn't (laughs) it possible that this one time out of all of the tens of thousands of regulations put in place by governments where those regulations have actually, again, protected big industry and big corporations from actually being, you know, having upstarts and competition. Look at Uber and Lyft for a great example of some upstarts that started up. And then, of course, the old guard got angry and the regulators stepped in and in a lot of areas uber and lyft have been outlawed it's illegal yeah. to run uber and lyft not because they're dangerous or because people are having bad experiences with them that's what they want you to believe that's what the taxi cab unions and the existing license holders want you to believe they want you to believe that uber and lyft are they're risky yeah. you don't want to da- take a ride they're some- risky you might like your ride so much that you voluntarily have sex with your uber driver <laughs> That happens, huh? I know. Yeah. You <laughs> might you like that? it so much. Have not done that. No. <laughs> you might like your ride so much that you know you do something that's absolutely completely different than what goes on in in the current market. You yeah. know. So that's another example of it, where you know these regulations keep innovators out of the marketplace, and if innovators are kept out of the marketplace, then nothing nothing significant changes in industry. And then we're stuck. We're stuck with this old model of whatever it is, whether we're talking about Internet, whether we're talking about cabbies, whatever we're discussing here is the more regulations there are, the slower innovation is allowed to occur. And the same thing's certainly true in healthcare. You mentioned that earlier, Johnson, was the, the healthcare business. Right. Tremendously regulated business where you can't put anything out there without putting it through some insane FDA certification or approval process that costs billions of dollars and jacks the price up of, you know, let's say, medication, for instance, jacks the price up way beyond what anyone can re- uh, reliably afford, which, of course, raises insurance rates and so on and so forth. Well, these fancy motor cars, Ian, they're gonna, they're going to, uh, their exhaust is gonna, uh, uh, the noise, it'll bug the horses. Mm, that's and, right. And the buggies. So you know, if you got to put a stop to that, you got to put a stop to this. This is absolute insanity. Well, we're fortunate that some things have managed to avoid the regulatory destruction prior to them sort of taking hold in the marketplace. Thank goodness. And Uber and Lyft are an example of that in a lot of places where you know they got started. They jumped in, and the government didn't know what the hell was going on because governments can't move as quickly as the actors in the marketplace. So Uber and Lyft were able to build up to very successful businesses before the regulators kind of got wind of what was happening, and then they put the clamp down. It's been a very expensive process. 
we're protecting the ca taxi drivers. Well, they're also claiming they're protecting the customers. Right. See, the claim is that the taxis, uh, the taxi companies are better. They're safer. They've been inspecting their cars. We don't know about all these people with their regular cars. I mean, they might just be out there driving around without any kind of safety uh, features whatsoever. Not in New Hampshire. 855 450 <laughs> free. Uh, that's the toll free number. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. We'll talk about magic mushrooms stopping smoking habits. It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Attention listeners, SurvivalLife.com is giving away free EverStrike permanent matches for a limited time only. These matches are waterproof and will light in any weather condition, rain, snow, or sleet. It will still throw a spark. Its built-in ferro rod strikes at 3,000 degrees, and it is good for 15,000 strikes. Normally, $15. Today, it's free. Get yours at FreeSurvivalLighter.com. Again, that's FreeSurvivalLighter.com. Hurry, supplies are limited. Visit FreeSurvivalLighter.com today. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Anyone can publish on the internet, but not everyone is publishing material suited for online reading. According to the Yahoo Style Guide, it cautions that internet content has a few seconds, three or less, to encourage people to read more, to take action, or navigate to another one of your pages. So make it easy for readers to pick and choose. Isn't that the way you poke around online? Use short words, short sentences, short paragraphs, bulleted lists, and short pages. Front load what you write, putting the most important information at the beginning of headlines and paragraphs and sentences. Same goes for your keywords. What someone would likely type into the search box on Yahoo or Google. For more tips on communicating better online or in a job interview or everyday life, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 
Dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio, it's me, Ian. And Johnson. Don't forget to join us online at freetalklive.com. And join us in real life at the upcoming New Hampshire Liberty Forum, where Free Talk Live will be broadcasting live every single night. It's a great convention-style event that the Free State Project puts on here every year in New Hampshire to show off the community and the amazing just groundswell of opportunity for liberty that we have here in New Hampshire uh, as part of the Free State Project. Go to nhlibertyforum.com. You can go there and get registered for the event. It's fairly affordable, nhlibertyforum.com. And it's even more affordable if you want to get a free ticket, which I can actually hook you up with. Uh, you just have to meet a couple of qualifications. There's actually three qualifications. One is you have to not yet be a Free State Project signer. Two is that you cannot yet live in New Hampshire. And three, you have to agree to attend the what's called the FSP questions session on Saturday mm. uh, during the Liberty Forum at 1230. So if you're willing to commit to attend that one session and you aren't yet in New Hampshire and you aren't yet a Free State Project signer, just email me at ian at freetalklive.com and then I'll forward your name to the events organizer. She'll confirm that, yes, you have been given a free ticket and there you go. And then, you just have to, then you just have to get there. That's all there is to it. Uh, so, again, nhlibertyforum.com. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else to say about this net neutrality thing. We've pretty much burned through the entirety of the uh, the Mises story, maybe like one or two paragraphs left. But uh, I thought they did a good job really looking at the unintended consequences <clears throat> of what are likely coming down the road here as a result of this. I just think that what you just said about getting that those free tickets, by the way, I think mm -hmm. that the, anybody who's a Free State Project member or you know thinking about becoming one, that seems like a very – uh, effective way. If you know somebody who you think might be, you might be able to get to come to Liberty Forum. You could utilize that as a way to get your golden pork. Ooh, ooh. Well, also you right? could you could use it as uh, as a real kind of closing tool. For instance, like you know, if you've sure. been if you live somewhere else and you're a Free State Project participant, and you know you're going to come up here and you right. want your uh, your wife or uh, a loved one or a friend or something like that to come and check it out. But they're like, yeah, I can't afford that. Then you could just say, well, hey, I can get you a free ticket. How about that? Yeah, and then sure. maybe they'll say. Yes. Like, I, I, you know, like some people, if they're into uh, Liberty stuff already, you know, but maybe aren't, aren't a Free State Project, uh, you know, aren't into the Free State Project or haven't really considered it or whatnot, but they would go to a Liberty conference like this. It certainly seems like, hey, that would be an opportunity to expose that person to the uh, the Free State Project. You know, maybe they're a Ron Paul mm -hmm. person or maybe they're, uh, you know, uh whatever, whatever else. That's a fine idea. So, yeah, so you can email me, ian at freetalklive.com, and uh, we can talk about that. So our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Johnson, uh, you had a story that was, I think, going to be shocking for a lot of people about magic mushrooms, psychedelic yes. mushrooms. Yes. Go for it. Where's it from? It's from um, the spiritscience.net. Okay. Um, so... You know, take it with a grain of salt, I guess. I, I wouldn't necessarily trust a site called the, the spiritscience.net right off the bat. But they sound like they, they have they, a bias. They, they sound like they have a bias, but this is, uh, they're citing some things from uh, CNN apparently too. So, uh, Psilocybin mushrooms, also known as magic mushrooms, have been known for a long time to have some pretty profound effects. Now, while the subject has become a taboo subject for a long time, it is coming more and more to light in the past few years that perhaps all of the sphere is based in fantasy. A small experiment recently blew minds everywhere when it demonstrated an 80% success rate on a group of smokers at least 30 years each. 30, 30 years, years smokers. They had been okay, smokers for 30 years. In comparison, other professionally legit quitting programs at best usually don't go higher than a 30%, 30%, 30%, okay. 30% success rate. And that's saying something. Um, so uh, then they've got this expert excerpt from this thing. I'll read it. Uh, it's from the Flower of Life. Uh, psychedelics are not drugs in the normal sense. They're very different from pleasure drugs like opium, heroin, crack, and similar sub -sub substances. I don't know why they have a dash in there. Uh, similar substances, which can actually do exactly the opposite of psychedelics. The pleasure drugs tend to enhance the loves, the, the lower centers. <laughs> I'm, <not, laughs> I'm going to read this anyway, I guess. I'll plow through here. The first three chakras and make you feel good, but they trap you in those lower centers. Dr. Gurdaif 
felt that in terms of sp the spiritual path, cocaine was the worst drug of all. I'm not judging anybody about this, but that was his opinion of cocaine because it causes a particular delusion and increases the sense of ego. Mm. It heads you in the opposite direction that spirituality normally takes. But the psychedelics do something different. They are not usually... Uh, physically addicting like the pleasure drugs. The Incas in used San Pedro cactus mixed with a little bit of the cocoa leaf. Cocoa leaf is completely different from cocaine. Some of the Native Americans, Indians, use psychedelics called peyote, which is legal for them since it is part of their religion. Hmm. O all over the walls in Egypt, in about 200 locations, you'll find images of the Amanita muscaria mushroom, mushroom a big white mushroom with red dots at least one book has been written solely about this subject uh the sacred the sacred mushroom by andrija pukarik um up oh, there's a little bit more in ancient times these psychedelics were used very purposely and ceremoniously intentionally uh to intentionally connect to a higher consciousness and bring information back down to the physical. Today, this is being demonstrated even in scientific experiments, meaning what is happening here is not that the mushrooms are causing people to stop smoking, but rather bringing them to a higher level of consciousness where they can observe their original reasons for smoking and changing the vibe of it so it is no longer desired. Hmm. It is essentially a very proactive means to quickly rewrite programs in the brain that perpetuate perpetuate addiction and smoking and replacing it with a holistic uh, mental program that brings about health and vitality. So that was an excerpt from, uh, from a book or um, is that the, part of the article? Uh, the, it was uh, the excerpt from the book stopped when I uh, mentioned the thing about the sacred mushroom and then went back to the article, I see. which was written by uh, a guy by the name of Jordan. Okay. Um, and it doesn't, that's, that's it. There's so no last it name. It's just like, Jordan. Is that the whole piece from this spirit? Uh, that, that's the piece from the spirit. I'm curious site. as to what the CNN story says. Let me go on to IFL science. Um, this is a looks like a little bit more of a uh, legit thing here. So it's a psilocybin, the active hallucinogenic ingredient in magic mushrooms, could help long-term smokers kick the habit. A new John Hopkins study has found. Okay. But before you skip to the woods and merrily start self-medicating, the participants <laughs> were also enrolled in a cognitive behavioral therapy program. So they're not really sure why it works yet. The study has been published huh. in the Journal of Ph Psychopharmacology. Magic mushrooms or shrooms are hallucinogenic mushrooms contain the psychedelic ingredients psilocybin and psilocin. When consumed, they can alter your mood, perception, and behavior. The ex this experience is colloquially known as tripping. They've been- Yeah, and it's a very, before yeah. you go on, it's a, it is a very kind of heady experience. Um, I mean, have you done psychedelic mushrooms, Johnson? Uh, no, I have never done mushrooms. I I've have done, done LSD, them. but not mushrooms. Uh, I, have, I, I find them more pleasant than LSD to some extent, although it depends on how you- you look at mm -hmm. it. I mean, certainly with uh, psychedelic mushrooms, you are more likely to puke yeah. on them than on LSD, but they also don't, I don't think they last as long in some cases. Like a dose of LSD can go for, you know, a, fu a full day or right. 12 hours or whatever. <laughs> uh, mushrooms, I'm usually done with those in probably six hours. But, uh, you know, I've, I've had a number of experiences with mushrooms. I've never taken a, a more than an eighth uh, of an ounce at a time. So I've never, like, you know, gone off into la la land or whatever. But, right. But I have had some pretty, you know, pretty interesting experiences. And one of the things about psychedelic mushrooms is, and I think psychedelics in general, is they're not party drugs. So they were talking a little bit in that other article about pleasure drugs. Um, it certainly is, it can be pleasurable to take psychedelic mushrooms. There's no doubt about that. But uh, It's weird that they say it's not a party drug considering that, you know, the whole reason why I took LSD is because I was a raver. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I mean, I, I'm not saying you couldn't do it, but I think in a lot of ways these are very internal drugs, meaning that sure. you know you're you're focused inside yourself. If I'm on if I'm on mushrooms, I'm more likely to want to go curl up in a bed somewhere than <laughs> uh, than to hang out at a party or whatever. Um, so it is more of an introspective kind of a journey, and and what they're suggesting is that maybe during that that journey, people can get some perspective on why they're smoking cigarettes in the mm -hmm. first place, and somehow change something about themselves. There's more. Certainly could see that to the story, right? Especially if you're being guided by uh, you know a, a, a therapy program on top of that. Well, yeah, that's usually how how these things go. So we can talk more about it here. You can share your experience with psychedelic mushrooms. It's free talk live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. 
This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction auction your product and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. Free Talk Live. I have a license. That means you're protected. That's nonsense. Just because somebody has a license doesn't mean anything about their business acumen. It doesn't mean anything about their ability to satisfy their customers. It essentially means that they paid the state money. And, and jumped through it. the hoops. Yep. And they filled out money. some paperwork. Exactly. And that's all that the license means. But yet it has this aura of legitimacy to it. Oh, it's a license. And they paid some money to the state. And so therefore they must be a good company. It's absurd. And absolutely. And what it does is it depletes the pool of people out there that would be doing business in that particular way. You know, they just can't get up the money to get the license. They can't get up the money to get the fancy vans and yes. all that other stuff that's involved in being a contractor or whatever. I'm, I'm thinking of plumbers right now, sure. I guess. And different plumbing jobs require different levels of skill. When you're talking about just a regular thing, why can't you have a handyman guy come in and do it? Why does he have to be licensed? Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, moments should remain, but enough time for you if you dial in now, toll free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com where you can enjoy the features that we share with you. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. Get interactive over there, do it for free. And if you like what we're doing on Free Talk Live, then you can help support the show by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier. And you can do that over at amp.freetalklive.com. It's all of $5 per month. We'll take that money in and invest it into Free Talk Live, getting on more radio stations around the country, bringing more internet listeners on board, and exposing new people to the ideas of freedom. So go to amp. 
amp.freetalklive.com to get signed up there. And there's a shirt that is being created. It actually has already been printed. Uh, it is on tech fabric. It's a long sleeve shirt. It's a nice quality shirt from what I understand. Now, Johnson, you've done some shirt dealings in the past before. Are you familiar with the tech wicking fabrics? I, I've had, it depends on, on uh, tech fabrics don't work for me because I'm a larger man. Oh, okay. And they're sort of elastic. Um, hmm. I got a shirt, unfortunately. Um, I Here's the thing. Buy the shirt a little bit larger, and I'm sure it would be awesome. I, I ordered a shirt, on, and I got the shirt in tech fabric. And it was too I tight. Was, it was too tight, and it was extremely disappointing. Because I was like, ah, this is the one you know one shirt or whatever. And it's like, uh, I gave it to my girlfriend, so there's a little bit of a benefit there. <laughs> well, the good news is uh, with <laughs> because this Because it is a little slightly elastic, and, you know, hey. That things work out. The, the good news is that with this shirt that's being developed, the AMP shirt uh, that has uh, been, been put together by one of our listeners and supporters, Michael January, is that he's already printed them out. So he's going to bring some of them to the right. Liberty so Forum. You, try, you, know, and you could try it on. Yeah. Uh, or in theory, you know, exactly. get your sizing properly uh, set there. Now, this shirt is only available to those who are Free Talk Live amplifiers at the platinum level, which is the highest level, $25 a month. Now, you can be an amplifier for 5 bucks a month, get all the regular perks. But if you want to get this shirt, you do need to be a platinum amplifier for at least two months, and you have to, so therefore you have to be a platinum by March first and stay a platinum through May first. Yeah. So you've got less than uh, two days here at this point to if, get signed up. I would say that if you're of the athletic variety, uh, Tech Fabric is absolutely fantastic because it's like one of those things that's like much more breathable. Yeah, and, he's a runner, I think, yeah. or he does some sort of you know workout stuff, and so he's really excited about this. Uh, it's got a word cloud design on it, which mm -hmm. shows some of our topics over time based on their popularity or how often they appear, and so it's a word cloud design. You can go and you can take a look at it by going to shirt.freetalklive.com. That's shirt.freetalklive.com, and if you want to sign up for this thing, you've got to become an at, uh, plant, platinum amplifier by March 1st, and so we're almost done with February here. You literally have no more than another day or two to do this so go to amp.freetalklive.com we appreciate your support and again if you can't afford platinum we still appreciate all of your support by you know we've got all these perks and hopefully you'll get behind the show we certainly do appreciate that again that's amp.freetalklive.com johnson you're sharing with us a story from a few different sources about uh, some shocking news regarding psychedelic mushrooms we've talked previously about mdma and psychedelic mushrooms as far as how they have helped people grapple with Serious issues like PTSD, MDMA, some initial very small studies mm -hmm. have shown that uh, MDMA has the ability to help people literally cure PTSD. Now, that sounds pretty outrageous when I make a statement like that because PTSD seems like a pretty serious problem that's really kind of – it's more a treatable thing than an, a curable thing. But the claims have, have been that I've read that you know MDMA – with therapy, you don't just pop some MDMA and go to a rave <laughs> – you uh, you know, take MDMA and you have a therapy session with a trained therapist who knows how to do this stuff that you will be able to, in a lot of cases, actually defeat PTSD. Right. And this this MDMA study was done on people who had tried it all. People with PTSD who had tried all the treatments and the medications and, you know, all the everything that the standard medicine has to offer as far as handling PTSD and its symptoms and none of those, you know, none of those therapies or whatever you want to call them were working. So this was like the last ditch attempt. All right, well, we've got this MDMA stuff. Let's try that. And then one <laughs> dose, one dose. Do you think that's really how it went down? Ah, let's just throw some drugs in them. Well, I'm sure it wasn't that <laughs> uh, brief of a decision, but it was, you know, the last ditch attempt, essentially, to help these people out. And they had amazing, amazing results. And that's what you're sharing with us, a similar amazing results with helping people quit smoking by taking psilocybin, uh, one of the active ingredients in psychedelic mushrooms. So, you know, I wanted to find out here a little bit more about the details of this. So it's kind of interesting. They say that to find out whether the psychedelic compound could help tobacco smokers, Johns Hopkins researchers enrolled 10 male and 5 female psychiatrically healthy volunteers. The participants were all nicotine-dependent smokers around the age of 50 that had smoked, on average, 20 cigarettes a day for 30 years. So these are smokers. Okay. Uh, these are not just smokers. They are smokers. Participants had also previously attempted to ditch the cigarettes around six times throughout their lives. During the first session, participants were administered a moderate 20 milligrams... Um, 
of psilocybin. Wait, it says 20 milligrams over 70 kilograms. Per, Do- that's per body weight. So oh, they're being okay. given, uh, for every 70 kilograms that the person weighs, they're being given 20 milligrams okay. of the drug. So dose of psilocybin in a pill form and in two subsequent sessions spread over eight weeks where they were administered a high dose, 30 milligrams per 70 kilograms. Participants were closely monitored during the session, which took place in a home-like setting. Some covered their eyes and listened to music, and they were encouraged to relax and focus on their inner uh, experiences. The sessions were uh, were paired with a comprehensive cognitive behavioral therapy program designed to help them quit smoking. This included a one-on-one count, sorry, included one-on-one counseling sessions and advising the participants to keep a diary in order to note when they felt they needed a cigarette most. Hmm. After six months, they found that 80% of the participants had abstained from smoking. It's incredible. This is markedly higher than the rates achieved with other common treatments such as nicotine replacement and behavioral therapies, which usually have a maximum of a 30% success rate. Varin Isoline, a widely used prescription drug for nicotine addiction, also only has a 35% success rate at six months. Researchers conclude that while the study cannot inform us of the efficacy of psilocybin, it seems to suggest that it may be useful in conjunction with current smoking cessation programs. Before you start Googling magic mushroom growing kits, <laughs> the researchers warned that the results were specific to the controlled doses given in the context of a structured therapy program. Right. The suggestion being yeah. that you can't just order some magic mushrooms off the internet, take them at home, and necessarily have as much success. Right. But it would be interesting to see how an amateur you know, a- attempt at this would or would not be successful. I mean, obviously the the <laughs> therapy guy, obviously the you know the licensed therapist or whoever the psych- psychiatrist in this case. Oh, uh, sorry, but is, a few guinea pigs just sprang to mind. <laughs> um, so obviously the psychiatrist who is you know he's paid a lot of money to go to school and get a piece of paper that says he knows how to do this stuff. Obviously they're going to give you the caveat. Now look, you can't just go out and get my magic mushrooms and solve your smoking problems. You need me. We need to sit down and have a discussion here. We need to pay me for <laughs> exactly. an office visit. So I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe there is certainly there could be some legitimacy to that claim, but it could also be that if you were to take some magic mushrooms and sit down with a loved one who was concerned about you and knew right knew what questions to ask, maybe there'd be a fifty percent success rate. I don't know. Yep. I, I certainly wonder. Yeah, exactly. You know, like what 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 could the percent the success rate be uh at home? <laughs> if thirty right. I mean, it seems like it you know, if it's eighty percent with the, the therapists, it seems like it still might not be too hard to beat that uh Without the therapists. Well, right. There was a, what, a 20, 30% success rate with some of the other programs. Yeah. Basically, whether it's all the patch. Other, basically, any other option has, a, at best, a 30% success rate. I mean, if you've been striking out on these other options, obviously, you can't just go to the average uh, clinic. Uh, the average uh, health clinic and say, I want to get some mushrooms and some th- and a therapy session. I mean, you know, even if you have a psychiatrist currently, that that current psychiatrist or whoever, uh, the therapist or whatever, they're not going to just agree to do that with you, right? Like these, the, the whoever it is, these professionals are that are agreeing to participate in these studies, they're likely sort of already on board. You know, they're right. they're cool with that, if you will. And so uh, it would be very difficult for you as just an average smoker hearing this news to, to try to do this in the way right. they're suggesting. You can't. Right. It's like, I'd like to get some dose of magic motion, maybe a little bit of indica on the side because I'd really like to stay relaxed throughout this process. So, you know, if you could just hook me up with that, maybe, you know, maybe some uh, Valtrex. No, so they're not Valtrex. <laughs> well, now, I, I mean, it's certainly true that there have been a lot of people who have uh, taken mushrooms over time who are still smoking cigarettes. So I think that you would have to go into this with the intention of examining that, right? Right. Like you're not just going in to listen to some Pink Floyd music and, you know, look at the pretty closed eyes visuals. Uh, you want to actually examine your thoughts and your beliefs and your I, habits around I think this. I just combined Vicodin and Xanax in my mind into Valtrex, and that's not the same thing at all. <laughs> Out of time for tonight. See you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict. 
or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. You want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Flaming Freedom is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, February 26, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,208, up $3.00. Silver opened at $16.61, up $0.06, cents, and Bitcoin is trading around $237.29. Today's metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Looking to promote your business or cause to tens of thousands of loyal listeners? For a limited time only, the Liberty Beat is offering you the chance to say big while spreading your message. It's simple. Just sign up for three months of advertising and get your fourth month free. Just visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise and use coupon code GCN in the describe your company section. In the news, Tuesday evening, President Obama vetoed a bill which would have approved final construction of the Keystone XL pipeline. The White House released a statement explaining President Obama's position on the matter. The president believed the bill was in conflict with established executive branch procedures. Obama said there were security, safety, and environmental issues.